Hello and welcome to session number 14 of the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Woo! Let's go! Join the channel! Boop. You Hello. know what? Do you want for Austin? Brown? Yeah, you can do Talk. it. Squeak? What? Yeah, like the typical <laughs> screech noise I... that they use for eagles, but eagles don't actually do that. Yeah, that's... I think that's the red-tailed hawk. If I remember yeah, yeah, right. it's it's some kind of hawk that's a red or brown adjacent in like yeah, it its says name. Yeah, it's red-tailed hawk. Yeah, there you go. What are you guys talking about? I've spent a lot of time looking up birds on Wikipedia. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Inspired by our adventures. You're talking about the party slowly becoming or being replaced with bird people to join the other three <laughs> bird NPCs we've had. <laughs> And I insisted that it will just devolve until the party only speaks in character with bird noises. Mm. And we're probably going to have to leave like that hawk screech to Austin, because I don't know if any of us have the voice prowess to pull that one off. I mean, nope, that... I just listened to it, and it's definitely an Austin thing. That would be the strangest way a D&D campaign ends up getting completely derailed. But hey, you guys yeah, yeah, want to be birds? something about a lost explorer. But the cool part, we're all birds? <laughs> <laughs> Dope. If you all want to become birds, I guess you'll... You'll find a way. I'll get polymorph eventually. Alright. It will become our religion. <laughs> so everyone's a bird. Oh my god. We will follow the word of bird. You... You knew this right away, like years ago. You predicted this years ago. Yeah. Amazing. Well, all right. Here we are. Uh, I hope you've been doing wonderfully since last session, and I hope you're ready and excited for today's. Excited. Excitement. Hype. Hype. All right. Recap time. Matt, it is your day today. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh no! We probably oh, should have reminded him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is it time? Is it time for the improv recap? <laughs> oh no! I mean, yeah, I totally knew that. Yeah, no, this is all a bit. Uh... <laughs> oh gee. <laughs> we, we probably should have posted a reminder. Holy crap, man. No. I, kind of, I kind of wasn't thinking about it until a couple I days ago. I wasn't thinking about it at all. Yeah. <laughs> you do like a collaborative recap? Collaborative okay. recap, let me, let's Let me go. get my best, uh, my best recollection here, and then <laughs> <laughs> you guys can, can correct me in all the places that I'm wrong, because I am. Uh, Okay, um, I think we began the session uh, with a few of us still beneath a tent, um, <laughs> and I think it was Talix and maybe one other person, probably not outside, uh, whenever we were on the verge of being killed. Um, then we heard the sound of the gnome captain lady uh, say some stuff in gnomish and kind of like calm down the situation quote unquote uh and then we heard um another voice of a individual who we would come to uh enjoy uh and then a loud booming voice and a whole bunch of wind and, and a large thud and all that good stuff of a dragon um kind of encircling the tent uh, like it's warming an egg, um, and basically standing in the way between the the gnome firing squad and our one hundred percent group of innocent adventurers. Mm -hmm. uh, the dragon was uh, pretty much called by uh, by Talix, who, in an attempt to def to defuse the situation, was uh, uh, sort of like saying the the we we. we, we well, what did you say, uh, Jason? Do you Wait, remember? Did I call it? I don't, yeah, you, I don't you, you, tell us well, no, to call you it. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh. You yelled out, like, please don't don't hurt us. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it was like. And then I, like, uh, yeah, and I asked about the volume of your voice, and. 
I see. It's, I didn't realize that actually is what got the dragon's attention. Oh yeah, you did. You did, Talix. Oh. oh. I didn't know that at all. I just assumed that uh, uh, the, the lion gun. person was like watching or something. Mm. Convenient timing. The guys didn't really get to see that, but the dragon, so the dragon saw and heard Talix, and then he put his head in, like, that opening that's in the temple. And what happened there was basically the priest getting to climb onto his neck and then getting flown over. Mm. So, like, Talix basically caused both of them to come. There you go. Talix, you're more, uh, your voice is MVP. more persuasive and intriguing <laughs> than a gunshot. You know, I Forget hear that all the time, but, <laughs> but it's always nice to hear more. Uh, anyways, uh, then basically the, the whole situation was, um, rather than the gnomes seeing logic and all of that, uh, a, a account of the situation was given from one side, uh, after the dragon and the sun priestess essentially told the gnomes to uh, stop uh, and then we we got to uh, plead our case quote unquote and give our our, our telling of the events that happened uh, before then being told to leave and not be able to hear the gnomes account of what happened um, we did after some snide remarks from a few of the party members and some glares from the other ones at the ones making snide remark uh, ones being the royal ones it was just one uh, <laughs> then uh said snide remarker i think left the party for the remainder of the session to go and basically bathe in the river uh, for the rest of the session uh while the rest of the party um did other stuff oh pip went to uh he went back to the family's house that we became good friends with and uh basically mm -hmm. started the dinner party early um with without people <laughs> and and kind of told the events and and had the whole moment of uh a child trying to have kids for friends and be a kid, but also having just left the scene of like, you know, a friend being shot and all of that <laughs> good stuff and killing monsters. And I think Pip had a moment of realization that I'm not like other kids. Um, then the rest of the party joined back up and they had a nice, uh, a nice little dinner thing with the racist lady who has decided <laughs> that she's perhaps not as racist anymore. During the first meeting between Pip and the, and the two brothers, uh, uh, he he uh, he got to learn something interest from the uh, interesting from the other kids, uh, uh, where they both had seemingly had a, a dream or, or vision of some kind, and Pip encouraged them to let uh, Talix know about this later during the dinner, uh, which they did, and it was like a bit of a uh, one of the kids was. Uh, reasonably good at drawing, and uh, uh, with the author of Talix's papers and names, he, he provided a portrait of a person that appeared uh, in both of their dreams uh, that appeared to match the person that Talix has seen uh, a few weeks ago in a vision of his own. And I think that was it, actually. Um, or after the dinner, then uh, the, the party kind of went back to the the uh where we're staying the the surprise yeah <laughs> yes yeah yep the surprise and uh, and then later in the night was was joined by their old man um and i think that, that was the end of the session i don't think that we woke uh, up and anything after did we oh man i think you're forgetting something very well, important here <laughs> the very end of the session <laughs> the very end of the session saw a uh, pontifex uh, uh being uh, done with his uh, uh, meditation and uh, walking out of the river only to find a flock of mechanical birds uh, mm. uh, surrounding his belongings. That was it, because we, we decided that Pontifex has the book. That was the big one. You're right. All right. Um, I think if I change... Well, actually, let's, let's just leave it at that. Um, yeah, thank you. 
here. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Here's your summary inspiration. <laughs> Can I willingly forego the summary inspiration? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna use it on the most non-critical thing possible. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, uh, sure. Okay. So, uh, in Vera's Inn, the surprise, uh, the party is making preparations for the night. You just enjoyed a good meal in good company and your spirits are high, but uh, still, the events of today's morning flash before your eyes as you attempt to fall asleep. Uh, r the rifles pointed at you, one wrong word away from taking your lives. Pontifex falling to one knee, his near mortal wound spitting out copious amounts of blood. The enormous dragon flying in your direction, landing mere feet away from Talix and Tekka. This was a day that you will not soon forget. Meanwhile, North of the colony, where the Wayfield River bends sharply to the west, under the bright light of Muriel and the waning Kirio, Pontifex emerges from the water after a day of quiet meditation, only to find a flock of mechanical birds surrounding his belongings. He is barely able to see the moonlight reflected on the metallic creatures as they work together to grab, pull, and lift his clothes and his equipment, scattering everything on the grass. Pontifex. Roll initiative. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Birds, you're fine. No, he explicitly doesn't have armor on right now. Uh, but they're implicitly birds. I've never actually seen a character with an AC value this low. Uh, <laughs> I can't even think of a monster in the monster manual with an AC this low. <laughs> this is pretty good. Uh, He's a barn, different. maybe. I believe the I have side of a barn. Oh, no. All right, let's see. Hopefully, uh, every I did everything correct. Mm, I sure didn't do everything correctly. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Now we're good. Um, oh, yeah, you'll just have to put it in your... Yeah, uh, note that you still had the injury from this morning, but you spent the in the entire day uh, not doing anything. Oh, like long tiring. resting. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. It, well, you can add a short rest basically. Um, can uh, oh, okay. you, you'd, you'd be at full hit points most likely, um, so you can go ahead and resolve that. Uh, Uh, and just let me know when your mini is set up. Uh, it's set up. You click refresh. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> 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 uh, well, I'm in danger. <laughs> No, they're just gonna steal all your shit before you can get out of the water. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Oh, it's I need... probably fine. I need my whiteboard. What am I doing? Okay. Um. Oh, and the grid. Apologies. Kind of important. Honestly, Oops. I don't know if I could take six ravens in real life. <laughs> with a weapon or without a weapon? What kind of weapon? I don't know, a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I mean, six of them, that, that's a lot to deal with. You know, um, fun fact, a group of ravens is called an unkindness. That is... I, I resent that. I... <laughs> well, that I didn't is name stereotyping. Them. Okay. That's implying that they're not kind. These are probably friends. So, uh, starting from number six, which is this one. So he joins in. He, it. Um, and uh, 
I am going to keep track and going to, I guess, roll for each of them of uh, the progress they're making towards uh, uh, digging through Pontifex's belongings. Um, so we have number six. We have number one, which is the one on top of the bag. To give the bag a health bar. <laughs> like, uh, in a way. I didn't it's like a progress bar. As, yeah, I didn't think of it as a health bar. <laughs> They're making a crafting check. Basically. <laughs> ah. All right, I need, oh, I need to move number two. And four. Three is the last one. And have this many okay um all right and then we get to pontifex who gets to see just the contents of uh, uh his backpack just getting scattered all over uh bits of his armor just getting flung here and there there is one of them that's actually holding like a piece of his pauldron uh just from the leather strip um uh -huh. from the talons uh, it's it's a mess, um, and they, they seem far more interested in what you own than in in you. Uh, so, uh, Pontifex, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, I think he, like you know, pops out of the water a little bit just in time to see this thing while they're uh, while they're ravaging his bags, uh, and I think he just like old man shouting at kids on lawn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with uh, with like thaumaturgy if possible, to just like boom his voice a little bit, and he's trying to like spook the birds off while he like wades to shore. Uh, is this like normal movement or is this difficult terrain? Uh, do you have a swim speed? Uh, oh, I might. <laughs> That's a good point. I think. Let me see, Pontifex. Do I? I don't think I do. Speed. Oh no, you don't. Frogs can't swim. Uh, so it's. No, it's, I uh, don't see a swim speed. It's difficult terrain then. Okay. Oh, I'm faster. I don't have my armor on. Oh <laughs> my god, a that's true. <laughs> 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 and you're uh, using your action for a thaumaturgy? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's booming thaumaturgy voice, you know. Hey, and, and swimming to the line of waiting to shore and okay. seeing if they get spooked at all. What's, uh, fear is generally wisdom, right? Uh, like a wisdom save effects. against the fear spell? Yeah. Right, uh, yeah, I think most frightened effects are based on wisdom. Um, oh. The machines cannot be frightened. Um. Mm hmm Okay, but uh, uh, it's not going to be fear, it's basically getting their attention. So some of them, and that's what I'll be rolling for, um, are might decide to prioritize getting you um, to not bother the others. So one, I'm going to go in order of their numbers. One, two, three, four, six. Oh, hey, 50. 50. It's going to be this one, this one, and that one. Um, and you'll see this, because uh, unless you're doing anything as a bonus action? Uh, yeah, he, he's kind of like reading the reaction before he does anything drastic. Uh, well, you can see that three of them turn their heads and sort of like drop what they're holding. And uh, it appears that rather than move away from you, they seem to be just about to start flying towards you. Mm. Uh, okay. This is, uh, dang me. This turn within five feet must make a blah, 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 blah. That's a bonus action. Oh, this is an action to cast. Oh! I've played this game for so many years, and I always thought this was a bonus action spell. Uh. Crap. Okay, no, uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's going to, uh, use his bonus action to cast Dragon's Breath on himself. Uh, does this... <laughs> it requires a hot pepper. 
Harper. It's okay. He's got his little orb that he's meditating with. <laughs> I think he, like, I you know, true. shouts his hey, and they turn their heads like they're going to turn to him. And I think he, like, you know, holds his little orb up to his face and, like, takes a deep inhale. And, like, little magical fumes come from the orb into his lungs. Mm-hmm. Or I guess, I don't know. He doesn't really breathe through his mouth, but it's fine. And he casts Dragon's Breath on himself. All right. And it doesn't do anything for the moment, yeah, but he's kind of in preparation. Just to release that, it will be an action on your later, your later round, yeah? Right. Okay. Um... <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, this one is here. And it's also in the process of digging through Pontifex's belongings and does not seize the attempt. Neither does number one, uh, who, <laughs> I guess, ends up like sort of, um, do you have a, do you have a blanket in your belongings? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, um, cause is, when he went yeah. to the, in the water, he like doesn't have his, his armor on, um, mm. and I think that would include his, uh, like his cloak, like his hood and his, in the cape of it. I think it's pretty mm -hmm. heavy. Okay, uh, this one is getting, like, stuck, um, in, uh, in the Pontifex's cloak, uh, has managed to somehow wrap, it, wrap itself inside of it and is struggling to come back out. It's making no progress towards uh, uh, unearthing your things. But number two, um, you have caught the interest of number two, which is this one. Uh, which is going to fly towards you. And imagine that this is like at, um, about your e, uh, your eye height. Um, sure. And it comes over. Um, how many do I have? Oh, that's perfect. And begins to uh, flap its wings uh, really fast. Number four is also going through the items. Where did I put my D20? There it is. Whoops. Accidentally zoomed in. Uh, ha -ha, ha -ha. And it's this one. And uh, this one, this bird, you see it uh, um, as it uh, sticks its talons inside of the backpack. Uh, you see it start to flap its wings to pull himself uh, to pull itself back away from the backpack while its talons uh, are holding uh, the leather straps that keep uh, the uh, Jamuel closed. So it's pulling the book out of the backpack. Number five is this one, which also comes here and starts. Uh, Flapping the wings really fast, and number three is the final one who also comes over. And when the three of them are all together, um, all focused on you, you can feel that uh, their the little uh, wings, they're sort of like this whirring uh, sound as they're all batting really, really fast. And you can feel the wind sort of like pick up speed, and you feel yourself getting pushed back a little bit. I'm going to be needing uh, a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Oh, wow. That passes. Uh, so you just, you like, you lean forward a little bit so that you can steady yourself a bit better. Uh, the, the strength of this, of this wind that the, that the birds are generating to push you away, it's not that much. They're kind of small. Um, and even you are just able to, like, um, to steady yourself. And the fact that you're partially, like, you're, you're, you're in the water down to your knees makes you also a little bit harder to push back. Um, Can I willingly move back like a little bit? You? Because I don't know how far they're trying to shove me, but can he? He's trying to resist it, but I think he's wanting to be pushed back out of their face. Uh, you can willingly fail this, or well, since you passed it, you can. Um, all right, on a failure, you would have been pushed 15 feet back. Uh, but since you pass, if you want to willingly go with the air, you can decide like how far of those 15 feet you'd like to move. Yeah, he'll go back like five if that's cool. Yeah, and uh, um, it's still sort of like technically not willy movement, so it wouldn't even uh, provoke opportunity attacks. Um, so then it's your turn. Uh, yeah, he's gonna dragon's breath. What kind of dragon was, uh, was Ralzir Gamir? A brass dragon. What element is brass dragons? Fire. 
Okay, no, I think I think he's still like partially thaumaturgy, so I think this dragon's breath is is thunder. So this is more like a loud explosion. He's still uh, from yelling, his face. "Hey!" Yeah, <laughs> I think he then like yells, "Hey!" in draconic and t totally. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's a, it's a cone in front of him. I think it just hits these three. <laughs> Foos, <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, they all need to throw. pick. Uh, yeah, a dexterity saving throw, uh, DC 14. Mm -hmm. And is it elf damage if they fail? Uh, yes. All right, go ahead and roll the damage while I roll the saves. Mm. A natural one, a five, and a sixteen. So one passes. In order is number five. This one. Uh, it's eight points of thunder damage. Anything else in your turn? That was your action, yes? Uh, yeah, that is my action. Um, yeah, I think he's gonna uh, he's gonna then try to move. Uh, so, twenty, thirty. I think this is still a difficult terrain spot, right? Uh, yeah. And that's it. Okay. Done. Um. Okay. Six begins to assist uh, number four with uh, removing the book from the from the bag. Uh, so with the two of them together, they they're not big or strong enough yet to even lift the book from the ground but you can see that they're working together and they're it's very obvious that they're uh specifically aiming to take uh jamuel uh so that will be six and one uh well, number two is here and it will come over and it will attempt to fly in your face and sort of like peck at your nose She's a natural 20. No. Oh, no. This this might be bad, guys. Yeah. Um, for a total of five piercing damage. Okay. Not the most exciting critical hit I've ever had. <clears throat> okay. Good. Good. <laughs> it's six on one. Good. <laughs> um. uh, so that's going to be number six and number four. <clears throat> Working together to lift the book. Um, where did number one? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, number one was trying to get out of the backpack. So it's going to, <clears throat> to lose its turn. But it comes out from uh, the your rolled up cloak uh, uh, and in, and it's joining the others. So these three are the ones that are focusing on the book. Uh, just leaving number five and three. From five. Um, which also sort of like flies over here. And uh, these are, <clears throat> these are tiny by the way. So they're not going mm -hmm. to like physically stop your movement if you want to move into the same the same space. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, pack, pack, pack. Does uh, a twelve hit? Uh, it will. He's gonna cast shield anyways, but it's still gonna hit. Okay. Then we'll roll the damage, which is. <laughs> 
The same damage that critical hit did earlier. Five piercing. For a normal hit. And number three coming over here. A 14 to hit. Yeah. Or three piercing damage. Back to you, Pontifex. Uh, let me let me double check the wording on this. Till the start. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's going to. Um, he's just gonna move. Uh, they can, they can do a tax opportunity, I guess. Well, now the fallen they're in his face. If I do the cone, do I hit the three that are in front of me? I don't know how cones work. I don't know if they originate in the space in front of you or if they originate in your own space. I believe every spell originates in the sp in the spot in front of you, or you know, a spot of your choice. Uh, so cones should start from one tile ahead of you. Okay, then, uh, then yeah, he's gonna move. Uh, I guess here. Yeah, because he can straight up be in this thing's space, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay, then actually, yeah, they don't need to make any attacks opportunity. And then he's going to Dragon's Breath at the three by his bag. Okay. Uh, those were dex saves, right? Right. DC 14. Da, 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 da. Ooh. Oh, I have three failures. Wait, uh, you said 14? Uh, DC 14. Okay, right. yeah, there are fa failures. Uh, uh, a lot. 15. Oh, God. Big roll. <laughs> um, all right. So, as you shout at uh, these three, um, your, your voice still being uh, um, far louder than normal thanks to, to Thaumaturgy. Um, even the ground shakes a little bit and the waves in the river, the water like pushes away from you. Uh, and each and every single one of these creatures, of these uh, uh, mechanical ravens ahead of you, uh, they burst into uh, metallic pieces scattering everywhere as the vibrations from your voice just disassemble them uh, where they are. Hell yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to use my bonus action to upcast Healing Word on myself at second level. Oh, yeah. Because you're not casting a spell when you're using yeah. for Dragon's Breath. That's right. Uh, so I heal for not. Look at these moves! What do we think? No good. problem! Yeah, here we go. It's all coming together. I'm gonna plop <laughs> these into your chest. You so challenge a frog wizard in his domain? <laughs> the river? <laughs> you is fools! This the end, is this the end of your turn? Uh, yeah. Okay. Right, All right, actually, can... sorry, yeah. he's gonna... I think he's actually gonna step back into the water. All right. Uh, yeah. Number two. Uh, as uh, the uh, the sound of metal clanking down on the ground uh, onto, the, onto the grass and onto your equipment and onto each other, uh, as the sound happens, the, the mechanical birds turn, and uh, they all... Their mission appears to be, above all else, to get the book. And with the others <laughs> incapacitated, uh, they begin to head towards it. So the first one will provoke an opportunity attack, if you'd like to take it. Um, is that one that was hit earlier, that failed? Is this the one, yes. This is one okay, of the I two think that five failed. is the one that's... Okay, then, uh, then yeah, sure. Uh, I think you only have your your hands, like. Uh, yeah, I think he's gonna try to beat it like out of the air with his little <laughs> with orb, orb thing. <laughs> <laughs> make an improvised attack if that's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, 
Yeah, it, that would be an improvised weapon. Uh, I mean, I assume it's an improvised weapon unless this is like a club. <laughs> no, it isn't. Uh, I don't uh, so it's a it... flat D20. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Hiya! <laughs> a 14 does not hit. Uh, these, oh, okay. these things are small enough um, that, you, you know, like, it's near impossible to, like, snatch a bird out of the air. Um, uh, yeah. And, like, you, you just swing, and it's a, it's a good attempt, um, but it's, uh, the, the bird is just too small and too fast and flies yeah. towards the, the, the book and starts, like, pulling at it. Um, he, like, hefted his orb over his head with, like, two hands and just <laughs> buried it halfway into the dirt. <laughs> Tried to just trounce a bird with like a globe. It it's like work. when you when you uh, mess up uh, uh, in uh, Wii bowling. <laughs> you swing the ball behind you. Um, five and three also coming here now, working together. The three of them to lift the book, and you can see that they they they're beginning to like rise into the air, but they're still a good uh, only ten feet up from the ground. Um, as they they're beginning. Uh, to take it away, uh, but then we're just right back to you, Pontifex. Uh, yeah, he's gonna step forward and dragon's breath him again. This is two, this is five, and this is three. Um, uh, ass failure, failure. Uh, ten. Down to five. It's much. And okay. Uh, so that means uh, they are all dead minus one. Only number two uh, is still up, but barely. As um, oh, much. as your voice just rattles their insides, uh, <clears throat> and uh, they j they just fall from the sky one after the other. Uh, the second one still, uh, this one still being uh, in the air and loses a few feet of of a uh, height, uh, but still flapping its wings. And the, the book is let go as soon as there aren't three of them to hold it and just hits the ground. Uh, anything else on your turn? Uh, uh, yeah, he's going to, um, the, the bird number two is like descended, right? It's like eight feet up. Okay. But the book yeah, he's is going to, he's going to get to his and like, uh, I guess, like protectively stand over it, and he's grabbing his um, his quarter staff, and that's okay. <clears throat> uh, left alone and physically unable of lifting uh, a Jamil on his own, this raven will begin flying away. Um. I would like to try to baseball bat it out of the sky. Yeah, I said it was eight feet up, but you're like over six feet tall, right? Yeah, he's well over six feet tall. And this, I mean, this is a quarter staff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you can definitely give it a try. And if you were to hit, it would go down. Do it. Uh, uh, flat d20. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you proficient with like quarter staffs as a weapon? Yeah, I'm a. Uh... I'm a yes, cleric, weapons. so he's proficient with all simple weapons. Yeah, then, uh, oh yeah, for you it is a plus zero to hit. Mm -hmm. Sounds uh -huh. like inspiration. Oh, all right. Here it comes, toss it into the tower. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a flat 19. That hits? Yeah. 
I think he just like straight up like goes <laughs> goes for the bag, scoops up the staff, and like without even looking where he's swinging, just home run bats the thing. And and uh, his goal is is to, is to I guess the other things are just like blown into a million pieces, right? Mm-hmm. He's trying to to keep this one more intact if possible. Uh, yeah, all the other ones have just been uh, uh, destroyed by the, the incredible vibrations of your voice, but when you <clears throat> when you strike this with your staff, it's more like you leave this uh, uh, dent into it, and as it flies to the ground, it's going to uh, uh, also get some more dents, but it is going to like stay together overall. Uh, no Perfect. longer moving, but uh, just... Um, the, the remains uh, of a small machine in the shape in the shape of a raven and that uh, ends combat that was a very unlikely hit <laughs> that you just did <laughs> it's what we use the inspiration <laughs> for because <laughs> uh, uh, he has a plan for this thing, an immediate plan mm. uh, if possible when this I mean now that they're like the other ones are shattered into a billion pieces and this one is clearly like non-functioning um mm -hmm. he's going to if it's on the ground he's gonna like immediately uh like almost like smash his orb thing to it and like press it straight into it and i'm gonna use my class feature to uh instantly cast identify okay um make sure if this this is All where right. I got that pearl for, baby. Uh, your... Your spell is going to confirm, without a doubt, uh, that there is no magic upon this machine. It is merely made of metal and a series of cogs and pieces that just all work together uh, to make this thing move. Hmm. 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 Uh, I guess, like, looking at, like, the scattered remains of the others, is there anything not metal? Are there, like, real bird bits in here? Because immediately now his mind is going to, how does it think? Yeah, sure thing. Um. Uh. uh <laughs> let me. <laughs> really think uh, this even warrants a check. Uh, uh, it's simple enough to just uh, uh, dig through all the metal pieces uh, uh, of all the other birds and just see that the metal is all you find. Some are different kinds of metals. Uh, some components seem to be made of different metals from the others, but there is absolutely nothing that is... Uh, uh, that is uh, flesh, that is feathers, uh, nothing organic in the slightest. Okay. Um, and this thing is like completely not moving, right? It's, mm -hmm. he's convincing, it's convinced that it's, it's broken. Uh, the, your staff ate it on like the side. And so one of the wings, the right one is completely bent, like uh, uh, almost all the way around, almost wrapping onto the other wing. Uh, so at the very least, uh, it's not moving, but even if it was, you would definitely not be able to fly. Okay, um, immediately checking on Jamiel. Uh, when you when you open the book, you see that there is a lot of text uh, in there that must have appeared at, at, at an earlier time um, that basically just, uh, just says, will this show up? Yeah. <laughs> so this is what was already in there, and then when you when you open the book, then the ink is going to start uh, uh, just like building up again and forming words, and and uh, uh, it will say, "It is done. You are safe." I was just making sure. You are telling me this was not what I expected, but. Uh, it's okay, we have one of them. There are questions. 
because I noticed these probably for the best they were focused on you. They simply had hostile intentions. I don't know how I would have fared. Whenever he's he's kind of conversing with uh, with Jamiel, he um, I guess after the identify didn't do anything magical. Um, is is there some kind of check I can make to look for like telltale signs of gnomish design? Like what kind of to see if there's any kind of like indicator of whether or not these things are gnomish in make? I would say they that are. Would be... oh. Yeah. They are too small to be normal ravens, so they probably are gnomish ravens. <laughs> They're gnome <laughs> ravens. Dwarf <laughs> ravens. Yeah. Um, roll an investigation check. Okay. Ooh, investigation. Ooh, this is like the first time I've ever gotten to do this. Oh, this is my uh, racial thing. Ooh. Uh, this plus the Yeah, 18. Okay, 18 total. Uh, um, is it actually cool if I if I guidance on? <laughs> it seems like he would have the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, for for in general for check where you're like, uh, yeah, where if it's something that you're like doing consciously, yes. If I you know if I ask for a perception check, generally I won't let that happen. Right, it's right, right. Like I figured anything but, yeah. that's not like time critical. Yeah, exactly. So you're like sitting cool. down and sifting through the pieces, and you're um. So 22. You have a general idea of what gnomish machines uh, look like. Um, it's not really uh, something that you have ever particularly looked into. Uh, your studies have been about uh, other things, but you do have a clear memory of the machines you've seen in the past, uh, especially having lived in... Uh, in the Elven country for so long, where you got to see many examples of just the famous Numish craftsmanship. So based on what you're seeing, the kinds of metals that you're seeing, the way they're soldered together, the way just even the mere design of the one that's still mostly in one, in one piece, it doesn't strike you as Numish in nature. And something else that you you'll notice as you're like going through the pieces and you're flipping over the uh, the one that's uh, that's uh, still somewhat together, and uh, you look on its belly, you're going to find a small engraving of uh, three letters. Are those in common, like the common alphabet? That's a good question. Uh, I'm gonna say no. And I'm just going to look over here. Ooh, okay, I'll get back to you on that because I have to just double check what language it would have been written with. Uh, but you'd be able to read the symbols regardless. Yeah, yeah. Like, try to get an estimate on what language it is. I don't think you have to be fluent in language to be able to recognize the text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, then I guess he's going to, uh, he's going to, like, jam its corpse into, uh, into like, a bag or something. Uh, he might even, like, dump his uh, his coinage or something in, into his pack and have this empty bag to, to shove its corpse into. Uh, and he's going to take the time to put his armor on and gather his things, and he's going to march back to town. Uh, it's, like, pretty late at this point, right? 
It's like a little, like not uh, like super yeah, late, but it's I, like I nine or it, ten p.m. at least. Yeah, that, that's that's what I remember exactly. Nine, ten p.m. Uh, um, uh, time. Um, the and as for the script, uh, it would just be Plurnan. Okay. Uh, definitely not from Lidaria, though. Mm hmm But as for more more specific, uh, uh your it's not going to point at any particular language or country. Um, also, you would have been able to see, like, once you found that, uh, if you found a few more pieces of the birds, you'd, you'd notice that uh, all the ones you can find that are from the lower back, they all have the same engraving. Uh, yeah, actually, if he, uh, if he gets, uh, I guess he'll gather up whatever pieces he can, like, within reason. He's not going to be sifting through the dirt for every, every bolt, mm -hmm. but... He's and you do to have to sift to find your own belongings where they, they kind of gone everywhere. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it just takes a bit of time to get back all of your things, and then you can take as much of the uh, of the metal bits from the birds that you'd like. He'll he'll gather up as much as is um, as practical, but he's not going to spend a, a whole lot of time on it. He's just gather gather whatever pieces are like within sight, mainly like the bigger pieces. And yeah, after putting his armor on, heading back to back to town, um, and I think he's gonna be uh, ritual casting um, detect magic um, the whole way there, uh, just to I don't know in case there's anything going on at all. He's just gonna keep a nice like thirty foot bubble around himself of at least detection, even though he found these things are magical, but he's skeptical. Okay, uh, the detect magic as you first cast it would confirm that uh, uh, there is no magic upon these machines or any of the pieces of metal that you've gathered. Uh, and mm -hmm. there are no particular surprises in, in terms of uh, uh, what you have. As far as I can remember. Uh, <laughs> um, real quick, with my investigation yeah. check earlier, um, could he have ascertained like, what kind of metal this is? Or is this something super alien? Uh, there are common metals. There is um, there is iron, steel, uh, bronze, and tin in there. Okay. Just like a mixture of stuff. Okay, mm. cool. It seems that there are uh, special metal. Uh, spe particular pieces will be made of particular metals. So everything seems very meticulously made. Uh, yeah, I think uh, on his way back to town, he's just ritual casting uh, detect magic the whole way there um, mm -hmm. to keep a little bit of a bubble. And I think he's got um, his his orb in one hand that he's using to, to channel this, and then he's got uh, Jamuel open in the other, and he's just talking to him the whole way back, and is like probably a little bit irate, uh, and is like imploring him to to remember something about these birds. <laughs> Jimil, these things have to be from your past. Something, someone, or something knows what what has happened. They they were going at you with purpose. They understand. You have to have run into these before. This might be related to your death. Think, and he's just telling him to think for like the whole path back. <laughs> think, Jamil, think. Yeah, because I'm sure that's gonna help. But. <laughs> ah. From the writing uh, that emerges from the pages of Jamuel, uh, he seems to be not only be making uh, as much of an effort as he can um, to remember something, but he, he seems genuinely um, very sorry that he can't uh, um, provide any information. Uh, but the as you like try to, to... Oh, you know what? Roll a persuasion check. Uh, Let's go from there. Um, is this one like within reason to guidance it? I don't think so, because it's like. I know, actually, I think he'd be guidancing Jamuel if that's an option. <laughs> um, do sentient items count as creatures? I don't know. Is Jamuel a creature? <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm guidance him. I was gonna rule something for him uh, anyway. Wow. 21. Yeah, he guidance the Jamuel and 21 persuasion. With a d4 for guidance. Okay. All right. Um. You're you're uh, 
At first, your anger sort of like just uh, push you to just, you know, tell him to, to think, to try to come up with something, but then you start trying to um, uh, find some constructive way, some constructive way of uh, triggering his memories, uh, uh, and you just try to go over places where he could have been and people he could have seen and uh, creatures he might have seen. Um, and uh, the one thing that Jamil keeps sort of like going back to is uh, that he does seem to have some faint recollection of seeing one creature made of metal. Um, and he remembers being scared of him and angry at him and having the sense of like animosity towards him and uh, um he, he jamil keeps referring to this machine as with like male pronouns uh rather than it mm -hmm. is this uh is this like a memory from like earlier in his life or from like relatively recently like towards the end of his quote unquote life. What did I roll? Uh, hmm. He just knows that. Uh, probably. It, it doesn't feel like a very recent memory. Think more, Jamil. Think more. Dig deeper. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pontifex's main goal is marching back to town as fast as he can. Your detect magic is not going to detect anything approaching you uh, the entire time. Okay. Um, you're using like your staff to light it away, and you're just following the river until you uh, you make it safely back to Vera. Uh, oh, I need. Change my color. By the time you return to the surprise, um, oh, are you going straight there? Yeah, yeah, he's going straight. To, uh, he's going straight to his friends. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the group would either be asleep or in the process of falling asleep. Well, I can see bits Not of anymore. The Yeah, while I was doing a poor attempt at a recap, they did a better job of a recap just by drawing it on the table. <laughs> Who was drawing? It was very cute. Not me. It's me. I appreciated it. I added the teeth. <laughs> oh, lovely. Uh, so we're going to go right to the part where Pontifex opens the door to everyone's room. Is Tekka sleeping in here, by the way? Or would he have wanted to, um... To be elsewhere? After today, yeah. Sticking together with someone he can trust. Okay. <laughs> uh, Pontifex, you open the door to find... Uh, uh, everybody is here, in their own respective beds. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think he just... You know, throws open the door. Wake up! <laughs> uh, and is like probably dropping his dropping his pack on the floor and you know throwing his his staff like up against the door frame or the wall and he's like on his knee you know rummaging through the pack to pull out that that corpse of the bird and all the pieces uh i think upon hearing the loud bang after Pontifex shouts like that talix will wake up with his starts for sure yeah. Well, what's happening? I'm not the sure, but it's bad. Uh, is everyone in the same room? Yeah. Yeah, we've got one okay. room. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, he'll pull out the thing um, if, if everyone's waking. I think he might even, like, reach over and grab a side table and, like, jerk it into the middle of the room uh, and, you know, throw this bag on it and, and, like, unfold it and have this corpse of the bird on it with all the pieces. These things, they, they followed me out where I went, and while I was meditating, I, I 
I finished my session and I came above water and I saw they were swarming my pack with Jamul in it and they were making a very uh, obvious attempt uh, to extract him from my belongings and to abscond with him. Um, I managed to destroy all of them and keep this one in one Wait, piece. Whoa, 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 professor, slow, slow down. What? Okay. And I think he'll like Are even throw attack? Jamul on the table and flip the pages back to when Jamul was panicking. <laughs> and just says Pontifex, Pontifex, Pontifex. <laughs> These birds that have been following us, that have been watching us. You've, you've killed some. I've killed several. But I managed to keep this one in one piece. Uh, these little bits and pieces are all that remains of the others. They attacked you. Uh, there was a half a dozen of them. They did not directly go for me, but when I attempted to... Uh, I attempted to shout at them to clear them of the bag, they, they broke off into groups of three. Uh, one came at me to... to deflect me whilst the other three try to carry away Jemuel. Uh, but uh, they, it is fine. Jemuel is fine. Whatever. I am fine. They were off. These, they're not passive anymore. These birds are acting. And it has this on it. And he'll flip it over to the belly and show the letters in Plernan. All of them have this. I, what was I it? Did o t dot h or something? It was o dot th. Right. I did a, a rudimentary a dissection of sorts uh, at the site. Uh, there was no signs of magic of this thing at all. Uh, it seemed to be moving and uh, following the orders somehow, but it is purely mechanical. I know not that uh, perhaps whenever I killed them, if killed is the right word, if perhaps that snuffed out the magic, I'm not sure. But uh, they do not seem gnomish in make. My first thought was that perhaps the gnomes learned something of Jamul, but I, 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 none of these, none of this design points to anything gnomish I have ever seen. And who it is written in Plurinen. Who better knows about Jamul? That's, uh, that Ludarian. The only person I can think of who would have an inkling of Jamul's is, uh, stars in her eyes. The, in the original time when we first saw the birds, but she did not seem to be, uh, I don't know, she did not come off to me as the type to take such overt actions. And I didn't get any hint of hostility from her. What all did you tell her? I didn't mention anything of the book. I simply mentioned that I have a way to be in communication with Jemuel. Uh, but that is it. I was very vague. There is no way that she could have discovered the book unless they had watched us use it. They very well could have. Right. Oh. It has been a while since we have conversed with him, but in the past we were not so cautious with it. Why Why would Stars in Her Eyes want the book? I'm not sure. It's the same reason why she wanted Jamul. Did she tell you? She asked me to, to ask Jamul a question. If he had found the answer or some such. She would not give me any more details in Jamul at the time when I asked him. It was unawares of what she was talking about, but uh, he seemed to, she seemed to be relying on Jamil for some sort of solution to a problem. Uh, and I, I suppose believes that Jamil may have figured it out. But that is it, and it was all that she asked for. What about these, uh, these letters here? Does this mean anything to anyone here? Some sort of name or association? Can we roll for that? You can roll history. Okay. And I will. 
<laughs> Would I roll a history on this one as well, or was that kind of factored into my to my earlier investigation? I already had it, yeah, I already thought of it as scenery investigation. Okay. Oh. Uh, nice. And the the letters just don't really mean anything to any of you. Not to my knowledge. Uh, I think Pontifex might even turn to Tekka. Because uh, it's written in... Oh wait, no, it's written in Plurnin, not Ladari. Mm, yeah. Never mind, I get mixed up. So yeah, the, the people who had the best chance of even thinking of anything would have been Pontifex and Talix and Brook. I'm not sure what all of this means, but... <laughs> All I can glean from this is that we are uh, no longer safe. Now there we are sleep two other parties anymore. after this book. Right. And it seems that, uh... What exactly did Jamil say about the mechanical... I'm sorry, I know you just went over this, but... What's the question? What, what did Jamil... What exactly did Jamil tell Pontifex earlier? Can you go over that a little bit again? Um, like... Uh, mainly, one, that he doesn't like machines, so that the machines gave him a bad feeling, and two, a vague recollection of meeting some kind of machine that Jamil uh, felt some strong aggression towards... Uh, and that Jamil refers to... Whenever Jamil talks about the mechanical birds that just try to steal him, uh, he uses it for them. But when he talks about this vague recollection of a machine that he met in the past, he specifically uses he. Okay. Um... Well, I suppose we need to keep our eyes out for one more thing now. We should leave in the morning. Before we go, I would like to speak with Rosil Gamir. I have that at appointment and I... There may be we've, something to learn. We've sort of committed ourselves to helping out with the... You know, helping the local controversy with the Aitara Philly. Mm, it is not our duty to help each and every one. This is greater. And the bird sender knows we are aware. I mean, in the end, the reeds will not necessarily be safer for us when it comes to the birds following us, right? And if we already committed to help them with the ism? They attacked when we stayed. Not They attacked when, we... when one of us was alone. If anything, I think this means we need to make sure that we stick together as a group. Don't let anyone out of our sight. That goes for Pip as well. And to always make sure that we know where the book is. Pip has been uh, very visibly giving Pontifex a silent treatment. I think Pontifex is too too worked up at the moment to even notice <laughs> the subtleties of, of Pip. It's like, um, the words that Austin used are angrily glaring. <laughs> oh wait, is he in is he in the Twitch chat or something? Oh no, he, he gave me instructions on what Pip will be doing while uh, he won't be here uh, for the session. Angrily glaring at Pontifex, yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Same. 
So, what's your decision? Okay. Look, I imagine that if none of us know of this, uh, Rosir Gamir is plurnan. To say no more of many things, perhaps he will have some insight. And it if is... not, that's a good idea. Leave. We should bring it up to him. If they... This seems to have some sort of ties to Plurna. And before we go, I do still have a arrangement with the Clem Kedatric of the pawn shop. Arrangement? I would... Uh... I cannot fulfill my end of the arrangement for now, but I do not wish to skip town without giving him word. Well, okay. And... Am I alone in wanting to help these Hyterophilia then? I'm... I mean... I'm not necessarily against it. Especially if you're already committed to it. But it also raises a question after what happens this morning. Are we going to stick together as a group? Because that was a close or near-death experience for probably all of us. And seeing everyone's reactions, it clearly wasn't something that was taken easy. Are you wanting to leave now? I do not want to leave, but I want to make sure that if we stick together, we actually uh, approach situations like a group compared to as an individual. Right? I agree. I because. was uh, becoming complacent, but... Now that this event has happened, someone else knows of Jamiel, someone else knows of us. Uh, Professor, you might also be referring to what happened with the gnomes. gnomes. I am aware. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm very, very happy that all of us are alive and I guess to a certain degree well but you too tech and pontifex have to understand that what the way you guys reacted this morning not only endangered you too but the entire group which is why we should leave we have enemies here I think we made enemies here. And unless you what want to... What is the difference? That one... Well, making enemies is based on something we have done. If it was and... not us, it would have been someone else. Yeah, but no, it's us, so we probably have to deal with the consequences, right? We have enemies, but we also have allies here. Luckily, it was us and not someone less equipped to deal with the situation. A smaller group, a less experienced group, may have died for it. But I agree. Our actions were rash. We were not thinking. I was riled up. I had a visceral response to it, which is uncharacteristic. And I have spent the day in meditation over it. It will never happen again. Alright. But Thank I agree more. with Tekka. If these Atarophilia are not helped by us, they will be helped by someone else. I think that we need to set the priorities and this thing with the birds has put it has made this thing with Jimmy more time critical. The longer that we have this the longer we are in danger. And now that their first attempts have failed, 
they are the persistent type. These birds have been with us over multiple colonies. If they have failed this once, I can only imagine their efforts will be redoubled, perhaps. We will not be so passive next time. Did Pontifex say he did want to go to the appointment with uh, the dragon? Yeah, he... he, he the, the things that prioritizes him is the appointment with the dragon, which was tomorrow. Mm. And he's the, at he wants to PM. talk to Clem Kadetrick. Um, like, just to remind you, the appointment is at 5 p.m., so if you wanted to attend to that, you would still have the entire day to spend in right. Vera. So either we can ask questions or we can lay low. But I think that this meeting with Rosir Gamir could be critical for, well, for both prospects. I feel like if, it, uh, if there is anyone to talk to about the Jamul, it is perhaps an old brass dragon who cares not for the trivialities of mortals. Fekka, as far as I see it, our options are to run now, or first thing in the morning, and be on the road, alone and blind to the intentions of our enemies, but still with just as many enemies after us. Or we can try to make good on a couple of promises we have to seemingly powerful allies who might be able to help us. And maybe that would just be a little bit better. Next sunrise, I am leaving with or without Jemu, with or without you. I do not feel safe here. Whatever sent those birds attacked Pontifex because he was alone. To leave now and go out on the road on your own would be incredibly foolish. You say foolish, yet you don't know. I know safety in numbers. This may bring into into the fold. Uh, what is your stake in this, Tekka? Why are you here? Why were you looking for Jamul in the first place? Like others, I seek answers. And that journey brought me to her. I now know my task. And what is your task? The task you were all given by her. To seek out these people of dreams. The tree, then. That is, is that where I go. But I will not stop seeking. It seems that this... That she... Has some connection to Jemuel. And if anyone would know... It would likely be him. I believe the sooner that we can cure him of this affliction... The sooner we can get his insight, the sooner we have that, the sooner we can do what she asked of us. Yet you wish to remain in the bird's hunting ground. From what we can tell, these bird's hunting grounds are every colony we have visited. Who knows, they are perhaps inundated throughout all of the Ladarian colonies. They are permanent, so perhaps... Wherever there is a Plurinan colony, these birds or something similar resides. So rather than be on the run and blind, I would seek to spend one more day to perhaps get an answer. 
a hint, some some form of direction. I understand the the desire to flee. <laughs> I do. It, it was my first reaction when I saw the birds. To flee. To pursue. How are you to pursue uh, with no trail? Sid! What are you trying to do here? I am a little at a loss. Um, I'm, I'm just letting... Yeah, Tekka just like letting his position be known that he's leaving tomorrow morning. Whatever the rest of the party feels this like. This would lead to Tekka leaving the party. Like, you're, you're, you're aware of this, right? Like, that that's what you're working towards right now. <laughs> We see where this goes. <laughs> I need I, I need you guys as players to work together to like make this work. Uh, um, that means that some of you sometimes will have to make some compromises. Oh, uh, <laughs> then let's see where the gate. The, how the day goes. Oh, yeah, no, I'm I'm yeah. I'm not worried it's about fine. this one personally. Yeah. Okay. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think it'll be fine. If uh, in whatever the case is, uh, Pontifex is not going to say it at the moment because it, it's not helping accomplish the task at hand. But he has no intentions of letting this group just walk off. You know about Jamiel, and if you're caught alone. They might know know about Jingle. That doesn't sound productive for anyone. Not only would you be in danger, but you endanger the rest of us and our mission. So I don't think he has any intention of being like, sure, go off on your own, do whatever you want. Wait, that's what I, I mean, all Pontifex wants to do is like, you know, one, talk to the dragon because that's cool. But his thing is he wants to get to the elf colony as soon as possible. But that doesn't seem to be the, the pressing issue at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, he's here for Jamiel. Yeah, I say we pursue this day's matters to see where we end up. I agree. Evening. So is that the end of the conversation? Well, in, on the topic of pursuing, perhaps it is best to um, if I'm not the one to hold Jamuel any longer, if something is to come after him, I would, I would hope it is in more capable hands. And I think he like holds, the, like picks up the book off the table and holds it to to Tekka. I have not seen anyone in the group fight for the others the way that you have. When I was injured, you were the first to act. I would feel you would do the same for him. I may not act correctly, but I will not disregard your wish. And he grabs Jamo. I do not ask for you to act logically correctly, but to act what you believe is correctly. Are you sure about this? He just said he was going to leave. If he is to leave, then perhaps Jamuel is best kept in his hands. He seems... driven, you could say. And... Out of all of us, I believe he wears his heart on his sleeve. Whatever feelings he has will be made apparent to the group. I am known to compartmentalize things and to overanalyze situations. Telex, you are known to get a little carried away in your ventures. Perhaps a little obsessive. And Brooke, I don't know enough about you. <laughs> you are not so transparent. <laughs> and Pip. 
I would not wish for this, these things to go after Pip. If I were to wish this attack of these birds upon anyone, <laughs> I believe Teko would have the best thoughts. Oh. He knows this place better than any of us. Also, not my first encounter with birds. And it is not his first encounter with birds. Plus, his miniature has a very large book on his back. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not bulletproof, I don't know what is. <laughs> Talex, if you are still worried at the end of the day, I will give General to you. Let us work together today. Okay. All right. Anyways, I have uh, woken all of you from your sleep. There is still a long night ahead, but I do not believe it is wise for us to all sleep soundly. I believe someone should keep watch on the window as if we were still in the wilderness. Okay, I can take the first shift. It is about midnight, um, so we have still like the entire night to, uh, to pass. And if it is all the same to you all, I would, I would very much like a rest. Yes. Okay. We're going to have Brook on watch, and then... Uh... Take a second, sure. And All right. Yeah. And yeah. Bonifex yeah. is sleeping in his armor, and I will incur whatever penalties that requires. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll have to look that up. Um, who's taking the third fifth? Alex will. Alex. And... Uh... Is Pontifex okay with the uh, last one? I mean, yeah, he's an old man. I see him as an early riser type, just as long as he'll he'll get a long rest in beforehand. When you finish a long rest, during which you slept in medium or heavy armor, you regain only one quarter of your spent hit dice. And you don't totally lose fine. any exhaustion levels if you have them. It's not going to go. affect you at all. I've only spent one hit dice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm going to take everyone's perception checks. Just all of you roll them now. And I'll write them down. And then we're going to take a short break. Alrighty. What? I <laughs> say my Why? dice just stop me there. Yeah. It's my computer. It keeps freezing. Oh, here's that. Uh, here's that inspiration die I went through. Um, I put it by. Oh, put it by the drag. I had. I hadn't realized I hadn't taken it. Oop. Brook has a fifteen. Pontifex has a thirteen, and Talix an eleven. All right. I'll see you back in ten minutes. All righty. For the following day, yeah. alright? Right, cool, cool. <laughs> see, you. see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello? Yeah, Hello. my girlfriend said she didn't like it, Line because it was too, too kid-oriented. Hmm. Which I get. Hello! Hello! <clears throat> Don't let her watch Clanets then. Because they right. actually look... Because they right. actually all of them look like kids. Man, I'm, I'm always so curious about, like, the conversations I I only catch the very end of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Do you think it's better with the context or without it? I'm actually not sure which is better. 
It depends. It depends. <laughs> I feel like if Winter came in hearing about how much we all love I want to eat your pancreas, then <laughs> that's a little bit more out of context. <laughs> oh, she will understand. <laughs> She it, it wouldn't be the first time that my players have talked about that. We've all decided that uh, if things go bad, we want to come back as our zombie selves. Mm. From the reborn. Better, the reborn instead of trying uh, to save save Jamel from being a book, we just want him to be one of us. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, well, we'll see how that goes. We're a hankering for gnome pancreas. <laughs> Uh, if you'd like to achieve Lich Dumb, that would be an option. I mean, that's like the life goal of every and wizard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's how you know you've made no. it. <laughs> I have been found out. <laughs> <laughs> then, we are. Where are my notes? I don't know why I oh. scroll away from the ones I need. Okay. Uh, in taste order, da 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 da, I got da 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 da. The night passes uh, without any of you noticing anything unusual outside of your window. Uh, none of you at any point spot any metallic bird um, anywhere. Well, as, as far as you can see, not uh, directly outside of your window not across the plaza on the rooftop uh, um, of the other building from you and uh, no particular suspicious activity going on in the streets uh, by the time the sun is about to rise uh, the, the market begins to um, to liven up uh, and people begin to be around and do perform their business and there is uh, nothing that really catches the attention of any of you um Squeak has been out for the night and just returns to Bip and uh, Bip doesn't seem to have anything special to report from that. Uh, but we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to need one of you to roll a d20 um, to see if you collect any rumors during, uh, uh, during breakfast. Ooh... I can roll it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you've got the best track record, so... Oh, boy, <laughs> well, you should have said that. Here we go. Um, average. It's you know, yeah. above average. Don't say yourself short. Okay. Uh, not for today. Nothing in particular. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people are, like, chatting about uh, what seems to have happened uh, when people have heard, like... Uh, some people have heard a rifle, and most people have seen uh, uh, the the dragon uh, um, taking flight, which apparently most people haven't seen happen ever. Uh, it doesn't seem like Brazil Gamir ever goes for uh, a flight unless um, uh, under unless exceptional circumstances are taking place. Um, so that's that's really what most people are talking about, uh, um, and nothing much you guys wouldn't know. And you have the day at your disposal. <clears throat> um, question to the group: Did anyone want some of the rubies still, or can I just sell them all off and trade some for money? Uh. In the event that we get money, then perhaps my thing with uh, with the pawn shop could be resolved. Pontifex is wanting to to buy his gift back. Right. Yeah. There. I think it was four hundred fifty gold. What I wrote down. Uh, what it's worth. Oh, the ruby. Yeah, for the rubies, and then I would just uh, divide it by five. How much gold do you need? Um, it was like right about a hundred total, uh, and I've got, I've got over 50 myself, so. All right. I think in, in whatever way it gets split, I can afford to, to go buy my thing back. Good. So nobody else wants some extra rubies? No. <clears throat> All right, sold. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going, and I know Dennis, you're going to love this, but I'm going to take a persuasion check from Brooke. Um, when he goes to like the do the dwarf lady that that um, Pontifex had a an unpleasant uh, uh, conversation <laughs> Does with. Does Brooke get advantage if Pontifex uh, just isn't there? <laughs> 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 uh, don't worry, lady. I kept that frog guy outside. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. No, hold on. That wouldn't be the right person because she's just. No, no, no it's fine. Um, no, the, to... uh, the dwarf is the one who. That was the one who I got the pearl from. Yeah. The jeweler. Yeah. Yeah. Algertrude. Um. And no, you don't get advantage if Pontifex isn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Only disadvantage if he is there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you just want me to roll then? Yep. And, you know, that, that will make an estimation of like how much more or how much less um, from the rightful value you're going to get. Okay. Da, 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 da. Uh, that means if you if you sell all the rubies that you have, question uh, real quick: the four hundred and fifty was it including the rubies you have given to Pontifex beforehand? Uh, uh, I have fifty gold of ruby teeth slash claws, but that's from we first killed it. Um, he took fifty golds worth of like the big tooth because he wanted it for a spell component. Okay, so the remaining four fifty should be what Brooke has. Yeah, yeah, I hope I'm not cheating you, but I think I wrote it down correctly. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was 500 total and I took 50 for the spell component piece. Okay, which means that in total you're going to be able to get... Why did I put this in the calculator like that? Um, you're going to get 430 gold pieces. Well, the equivalent of gold pieces. You can have some uh, platinums in there, however you'd like the distribution, but... Uh, uh, Elgortrude will be glad to take them off your hands. Uh, I believe you guys made like an effort to clean them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're, yeah, they're good to go. Let's see, quick mask. Uh -huh. All right, everyone gets 86 gold. Welcome. Oh, wow. Talix is no longer broke again. Fantastic. Oh yeah, don't get too far away for today. I'll do our stuff. Then yeah, Pontifex is gonna go to go to the pawn shop and uh, talk with uh, talk with the guy, claim Kadetric. The dragonborn and get his uh, get a secret robe back. He's gonna go in there, say spring sugar, and get his stuff back. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you have. Did you solve the Sudoku? <laughs> yeah, I've only it left. It was in fact the... spring sugar. You've only left the item in there for uh, for one day, so you will just have to pay the two coppers, and sure. be able to just get the whole thing back. And how and... much was it? Mm, I do not possess this information. Because I just got the the pearl, which is a hundred. Oh, no, it is one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough. Oh. Uh, I'm just short. Uh, no, I can't sell. <laughs> How much do you? How much do you need? You could put uh, off something else. Nine. I need nine more gold. <laughs> <laughs> I can give it to you. Oh, not you. exactly, is it? Do what? For the pearl? Yeah, I already got the pearl. This is to get the the magic sequined robe back that he got from Glimmer. Because uh, now that I have the pearl, I can identify it. All right. so if, if you, you just crazy. gave that to stars in her eyes, we wouldn't have been attacked by birds. Right. It could be the solution <laughs> to all of our problems. All right. <laughs> got my gold from me. Okay, so it was a uh, hundred fifty gold and two, two copper. Two coppers. Yep. Um, I'm taking taking nine gold from Brooke, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. And you're going, um, Clum Kidatrix is, is just going to go uh, in the back and retrieve the robes right away. And they are exactly, um, turned to you exactly as they were. They don't have a speck of dust on them. Nice. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> whatever he was paying him for, God, he has to, like, fish through his pack because he dumped all of his coins, <laughs> like, just willy-nilly into the pack to make room for the bird corpse. So he's, like, dumping out his whole pack on his table to pay him and gets what he, gets what he came for and, uh, he's gonna walk back to the group. I think he's just gonna, just to get it out of the way, I'm gonna identify it. Oh, sure I'll thing. use my, my class feature to, to just um, do it. Does Talix now want to buy the two books that, that he had spotted in, in, in the pawn shop? Jason? I they uh, were they weren't anything all that special from what I remember, right? Uh, like... the autobiography of a paladin uh, and the fictional story of a goblin pirate. How much was the goblin pirate story? Twelve <laughs> gold pieces. Talix will buy it. <laughs> Okay, just gonna mark this off. Strike and Pontifex. Uh, here are the robes. Uh, the robes do they are magical, they do not require attunement and uh, they provide the wearer with advantage on performance checks that are based on dancing. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Advantage on performance checks for dancing. It's the best use of transmutation magic I've ever heard. I love it. So it was 12 gold pieces? Yes. Okay. Does this thing have a, have a magical item name? They are called... I'm gonna uh, message you. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just gonna put it in, in, uh, in TTS. They're called MJ's Robes. <laughs> That's why they're sequined. Yes. I love it. Okay. And Talix uh. has a book about a goblin pirate and his adventures. What's his name? It's a mystery. I don't know. What, what's his name? Um, it will become apparent once Talix reads the book and shares the information with the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> the book just has whatever Jason decides it has. I mean, I think we Can all we, know. It's it's Ictibriv. It's Ictibriv. Yes. For sure. Yeah. I'm surprised Ictibriv wouldn't put their own name on the cover of the book. <laughs> it, well, it's not. It's uh, not this is not the autobiography. Yeah. Is, is it Ictabriv, because... also known as name, also known as uh, name, yes. also known as <laughs> name? <laughs> it just has like a full front and back page of all the aliases. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Could we be at one of the tables at the surprise, or yeah, are we outside we... the tavern? Uh, uh, well, right now you're in the uh, the dragon sword, but oh, okay, so we all went there. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, we we did our our pawn shopping. But I if think you want to do something at a tavern, we can do that. Back and... You know, just uh, no, it, it, it can be outside. I don't mind. Okay, uh, so shopping right. has just taken place, so. uh, and you're directly outside of the dragon sword with the. Uh, 
uh, the gnome guard uh, just glaring at you. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> you started with her. <laughs> nah, just, just glaring at this. Don't start it with one. I'm in no mood. Uh, Winter, I told you before the session, you can do anything but put us, uh, but put more gnomes in front of us. <laughs> she started. She works here. <laughs> Maybe she got fired conveniently. <laughs> Until we're out of town. Like the cast suggestion, and my suggestion is stop being a gnome. Uh, <laughs> Sid, what were you gonna say? Would you give me a minute before we go? Uh, is this before we we go shopping? No, this is after we're outside the dragon's <clears throat> Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, what do you need? We have uh, several hours before my meeting with Rosier Gamir. While I do not regret my actions yesterday, I put you all in great danger. So for the day, I will do as you ask. Whatever you wish to do here, I will help and assist you. All right. Thank you, Tekka. I hope no. we can reciprocate it on better terms. Hopefully this is a longer lasting sort of mutual thing. But the sentiment is appreciated. Well, we've got some funds, and we do know that we have a bit of a, a bit of a journey ahead of us before we can get to Arya. So, let's stock up on rations and anything else we need for the road. And if it's all right with everyone, I'd like to at least check in and see what we can do. Or the Atar Philly here. Sure, I'll help you. Right. And in the meantime, keep your eyes to the skies. If anything strange happens, we can adjust the plan accordingly. Of course. Okay. And we keep our uh Lonesome forays to a minimum. Hmm. Where's Pip? Purchasing <laughs> candy. <laughs> you hear squawk! <laughs> <laughs> He's getting carried away! <laughs> My God, guys! Damn it. <laughs> I'm going to see the Lord of the Ravens! <laughs> Bye, everyone! <laughs> I asked the birds, they said they're friendly. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just over here I don't know why candy. I started going into Morty there. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound a bit like that. <laughs> Start the transition. Uh, if we'd like, we can handle the the restocking uh, after the session, in between sessions. Sure. Uh, like you know, rations and such. We can we can just do that later. Okay. Who needs rations? I have a single Uplu fruit. <laughs> <laughs> All I need. It's probably still fine. <laughs> it's like dripping rancid juice and there are flies swarming all around Fontifex. That's what attracted the birds. <laughs> the birds were after the Uplu all along. They were just moving Jamiel out of the way. Yeah, they yeah. Book has just, just soaked up all the juices. Okay, and moving on. Uh, <laughs> what is the plan? Uh, we're probably going to look into what happened to the essence body. Mm -hmm. I yeah, so they're at 
So all the Aterophilia are at this little encampment over here, right? Or is that the gnomes? Ah, uh, yeah, this is, this is where the Aterophilia are. Uh, imagine that there's like more tents. And they're being they're... kept under armed guard right now? There are. Uh, well, yeah, you've you've seen from the other side of the river, and you would have seen also when you went up to the to the currently being built train station that there are guards like around, uh, mainly you know on the on the parts leading away from the city. So they're mostly on this side, so that they cannot really leave without going through here. And they're also on this area, which is like the main sort of like road that leads to them. Are you heading that way? That's what. Talix would want to do. Yeah. Sure. Um, how many hours are there roughly until, until the appointment? You slept until 8, you had breakfast and you bought things until 9, 9.30, so it's not even 10 a.m. by now. Okay, cool. Yeah, we've got like seven-ish hours. Yeah, hell yeah. So, uh, at the very edge of the colony, there is a small number of tents erected side by side in a circle, uh, as if huddled together to keep warm. A couple of, of campfires burn in the middle of them, uh, kept alive long after sunrise. You notice a, a handful of Cambellian guards watching you closely as you approach the camp. Uh, one of them is a gnome. In the camp, a couple dozen men and women are busy preparing food as others come from the river with buckets of water and fish. These are all Itarophili, people with webbed hands and slightly translucent skin, which gives you a glimpse into their veins, bones and organs whenever they stand between you and the low morning sun. You can feel a certain tension in the air, particularly whenever an Itara steps anywhere near the guards. And you notice Plenty of worried glances directed your way. Uh, as soon as you make your way anywhere near uh, the group of tents, uh, uh, quickly a tall Tarophilia with a black ponytail steps towards you. His amber-colored colored clothes slightly glisten in the sunlight, uh, uh, as if they were covered in a metallic sheen, and they leave his chest exposed. He stops, cross-armed in front of your group, looking slowly at each of you, and uh, as he does, you all notice that the skin around one of his eyes is swollen and, and purple. And then uh, he speaks in Itarian, for any of you who understand it. If you're here for Pax, you're wasting your time. We're not ending her back. Well, uh, I'll, I'll respond, I guess. So, we were sent here actually to look more into the matter of Pax's death. Sort of like grunts. Uh, you can see his uh, fingers clutching on his arms a little bit like tighter as he says, What else is there to look into? And we talked enough. Well. <clears throat> I apologize to trouble you, but we're actually not with the guard here. Uh, we're sort of independent group hoping to bring a peaceful resolution to all of this. If you wouldn't mind going over everything with me as well, it would be maybe helpful. I'd like to be a friend to you. Uh, roll a persuasion check. Okay. A chance. No chance. Hmm. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, the the tension uh, that this man uh, clearly is feeling doesn't seem to go away, uh, but at the at the very least, uh, uh, he doesn't like he doesn't shoo you away. Um, and said he, he glances at all of you again, and he sighs, and says, I, I can go over it again if that's what you really want. Thank you. Uh, is, uh, is 
Salik's the only one who speaks Sitarian. I don't. Okay, he is. Um, we can't say for for ease uh, of this conversation that Talis can translate, you know, as like he's going to uh, everything that, we're, that you're going to hear that he said by Talis uh, and by this man uh, is going to be understood by the rest of you with uh, Talis providing a translation on the fly. Uh, so if you'd like to interject, you're, you're able to, and Talis will just translate your words for you. Sounds good. Uh, the man sort of like rubs the bridge um, of his nose like between his eyes. Uh, he seems a little tired and also just a little annoyed by the fact that this is still going on. Uh, and uh, then he just says, what do you know? Uh, from how it was explained to me. The local lesson here, Pax, uh, died rather suddenly, but before the locals here could investigate the means or the, uh, the circumstances of her death, right, Liam? Mm -hmm. Circumstances of her death of, well... <laughs> Her body was taken, I assume for some sort of ceremonial purpose, but it's sort of, uh, well, the townsfolk here seem sort of what's suspicious of you. And in any case, uh, I just want to know more about what you know of her death, how it happened. And we can go from there. Um, uh, okay. The... The man just uh, sort of like gestures uh, for you to follow him and it's going to take you a little bit closer to uh, one of the campfires where there's a few stools uh, uh, that are currently not uh, uh, being used and uh, he'll sit down on one of them and there is three more uh, available for anyone who'd like to take them uh, <clears throat> and then he'll say your people struggle to understand the concept of the seabed and I think uh, Pekka speaks as unfair right yes yeah uh, and like he picks up this word uh, from uh, what the man is saying um, and then he's, he already knows the meaning of it, which just literally, it, it's like, a, it's a word made up of two parts that literally imply, um, literally means n having no time, like having, uh, running out of time. Uh, and then the man just continues. The as in, as people exist to assist the others and they only have a certain amount of time to do so when the time runs out they die it's their natural way to go but foreigners is a difficult concept to grasp they think that if somebody dies of suddenly like this it has to mean that something foul has taken place. But it is not the case. It is the essence way of dying of old age. As for what we were uh, are doing... The Ezen a, are oh, the Ezen a particularly... <laughs> Are they isn't a particularly long-lived folk, then? I... I don't know if I've heard of this happening anywhere else. Not always. Not necessarily. Some only live, live for a few years, and some make it for centuries. 
Nobody knows when Ersivet is going to come. Not even they. Hmm. As for her body, oh. there is yeah. a cemetery north of here, uh, near a lake. We were going to take her there. Oh, uh, yes, I believe I've heard of this place. It's, uh, its location is known to others. It is a cemetery of <coughs> my people. But any Lutherian uh, buried there would, would certainly find peace. But for now, we're stuck here, and her body is left decomposing. Well, I made her a... Uh, made her a coffin. And she's lying to rest there now. We haven't buried the coffin yet. We're planning to take it to the cemetery, so it is just... It's, it's just, just a matter of convincing the guards. He nods. Well, I will look a bit more into this matter, and uh, for now I'll see if I can convince those in power here to, uh, to see your side of things. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Uh, we'll probably speak again later today. Just don't disturb my people. If you wish to talk okay. to any of them for any reason, I want to be there. Understood. Okay. He just waits for you to leave. Uh... And like when you stand up, he'll stand up too. Um, as we're walking away from the camp, I've, I'm, I think I'm gonna head back towards the church. If everyone's alright with that. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want yeah. to do anything here before? I'd like, yeah, I'd like to ask Tucker real quick about the. Uh, what'd, you, what'd you say it was called? The Tara. Oh, Siveid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tekka, this concept with Athiazin. Have you heard of this before? Somehow, I've never heard of this uh, phenomenon. Tekka can roll history. Alright. Uh, to Tekka, the concept is not known. But then again, most people don't know but much about Ezin to begin with. Uh, beyond the basics that you guys have already gathered, that like the fact that they generally there's always one or two in every settlement, uh, and they tend to pick up certain kinds of jobs. Uh, beyond that. Uh, they are uh, generally just this mystery. Nobody knows what they look like, and nobody really knows what what they are about, or even what they're thinking. Uh, so this idea that they can just drop dead out of nowhere is new to Taika, but not necessarily impossible. It wouldn't be much stranger than some other rumors that he would have heard about Ezin. Uh, all they can confirm is that the word that he used does seem to be a term in Ezenfer, in the room, in the language of the Ezen. It sounds is familiar, but I don't know its meaning. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. 
italics. I worry about the bruise. What have the guards done? There's likely been some sort of, uh... Hmm. If it has come to violence, I worry words may not be enough. I'm gonna assume the guards have done the same thing to them they have done to us. When we didn't do what they said. Well, so the guards here... It's not specifically gnome guards, it's like a mixture, oh. right? Uh, it's... they're all non-gnome except for one. Oh. There's only one gnome in the guards that are surrounding the yeah. the camp. This, these... yeah, these are the guards for... Yeah. Like these guards work for the settlement here, not for... Mm-hmm. Or for Vera. Perhaps if I just speak to... What was her name? Like, Sarabella or something? Sarah Beth. Sarah Beth, okay. Um, perhaps I can just speak to Sarah Beth. We... She seems rather zealous, but... Well... No, I can make her listen. I'm a cleric, just like she is. Then Although let's... perhaps we should do a bit of research. Oh, there isn't enough time, though. Is there... is there any place... No, yeah, there's, there's no library here, right? There's nothing like that. Uh, not in Vera. Hmm. Pontifex could ask the dragon if there are answers you seek. I just don't feel entirely comfortable without knowing more information about this seabed business. We could return and ask further. There will be no other Essen here in Vera. Right. Let me just see where Sarabeth stands as far as their request to venture to that graveyard. You're returning to the church then? Yeah. I guess. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, the five of you just make your way back to the, um, your way to the temple. Uh, I think only Talix, Talix has been inside um, so far, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, the same said um, the morning. Uh, um, mm -mm -mm. What's a word in English uh, for? Uh, I think it's a mass, right? Yeah. The thing the churches do. Okay. Um, it's, it's already been done and taken care of, and uh, some people are sort of like still gathered outside, small, grub, uh, small groups talking, but otherwise inside it's for the most part empty, uh, with uh, Sarah Beth uh, uh, just being um, near the altar, uh, just uh, lighting candles uh, and available for you to talk to her. Uh... Talix will approach. Um, 
Uh, she'll recognize Sarah you Beth. and just like the group, uh, and uh, she'll she'll just drop what she's doing and uh, straighten her back. Uh, and go ahead. I good. talked over you. I think. Uh, good morning. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you again for helping us out of that situation. Good morning, and yes, of course. Is um, is your knee uh, holding up okay, Pontifex? It is fine. It is mending. Uh, thank you for asking. She just nods, and then um, she's going to face Talix again. Is there a problem? I've been looking into that issue that you requested of me with the Atara Philly here. Have you made any progress? Well, I've heard their side of things. I suppose you've already heard the explanation, but well, about the seabed. Convenient excuse, if you if you ask me. Well, Look. the Asn are a rather mysterious race, you have to admit. They're, uh... Well, we don't know much about them at all. I do not deny that people can die for uh, sudden causes that were not brought by other people. Heart attacks or whatever, but... That is exactly what the autopsy is supposed to reveal. The fact that they're hiding the body from us is... an issue. If they had nothing to hide, they would just let us do it. It's... a matter of, uh... great... spiritual importance for them, I believe. To preserve the essence. Privacy. <laughs> this could be resolved in so many ways, but they're fighting us on every single one of them. I could make them speak the truth. I could just interrogate all of them and a little bit of magic and I'd be able to tell if everything is exactly as they say. But, well, nobody sees uh, uh, the liberal casting of magic as a uh, something safe and acceptable. The I can Tarafili, attest to that. The Tarafili are no different. Hmm. If I could get one to agree to some sort of interrogation under a Zone of Truth spell, you would consider it Sufficient evidence of their innocence. I am unsure if a single person would do. I would love to line them up and just ask all of them if they killed the Pax. Although I understand that they will never submit, submit themselves to such a practice. Might I ask why you ask all of them to prove their innocence, but not any of your own townsfolk. Because the last people to see her were all at Arafili. As far as my guards have been able to report, they brought two of them to see her on the evening before her death. And the person who then discovered her body was a third at Arafili later in the following morning. My guards, and what is my guard saw her alive. Three? Yeah, I finished. Go ahead. Okay. Your guard saw her alive between the the first and second sighting by the Atari Philly. Wait, uh, can you repeat that? Okay, so your guards saw two Atari Philly see her. Then saw her alive. And then a third Atara Philly saw her dead. Later on, what, the next day? Mm-hmm. 
my guards accompanied the two Atarafili in question two packs. So all four of them were together. And then my guards left the two of them in her care. So as far as my people are concerned, that was the last time Pax was seen alive. And what has happened with these two? Where are they now? One of them is still in town. We have not seen the second one. Perhaps he ran off? Or maybe he's in one of their tents and has yet to come out. The one who discovered the body and who then proceeded to gather his entire tribe and uh, take her out of her office was the leader of the group. I believe his name is Fust. Fust? Uh, oh. <clears throat> Here it is, I'll just put it in chat. Okay. I recommend you speak with them if you haven't already. Perhaps you'd like to poke around the um, inner office as well. I've already given my guards permission for you to poke around inside. Understood. We will... Wait, um... So... An interrogation with these two, or perhaps all three of them, would that be sufficient? They are certainly my primary suspects. I cannot say for sure that interrogating only the three of them will be sufficient, but it will certainly be progress. What more could you need? The truth. Could you accept that sometimes things happen without an explanation? No. You have no reason to connect anyone else to this crime, aside from those three, correct? For the time being, no. And if it is true that Tezen can just die, as they claim, I would like to verify that none of my suspects indeed had anything to do with it. Okay. You need to understand, I... I feel no animosity towards the Atarafili. Pax was a member of my colony, and I cannot let the citizens of Vera to, to suffer. If anything happened to her, if anything was done to her, then whoever did that needs to be brought to justice. That leader, Fust, uh, he looked like he had been in some sort of... some sort of altercation. Do you happen to know anything about that? I am not aware of what might, might have happened to him, no. Alright. I'll poke around and see what I can get everyone to agree with. Thank you, Talix. And good luck. It sounds like mm. you'll need it. Is everyone else here okay? May I speak? Of course. It, while you may not feel animosity, someone in your community does. 
That is why they will not be forthcoming if they are met with violence. We need some guarantee they will not be harmed. Not be harmed again. Hmm. No Itara has ever been harmed within the boundaries of Vera. At least, not that I am aware of. Not by my people, not by not by the gnomes that we are allowed we are allowed to work with us and if this is what it takes then you have my word that no harm will be brought to them although if one of them did hurt Pax then things would be different Fine. Then we leave and find the truth. I trust that your group will have a, a better chance of finding the truth than my guards will. Specifically uh, because of that animosity you mentioned. I trust you with this. Hmm. Okay, let's head else? in the direction. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, you, you can go. She was gonna ask if you needed anything else. Um, oh. But uh, if you, she can also just give you directions to the to the infirmary, if you'd uh, like to check that out at any point. Uh yes, yes we. I'd like to take a look inside. It is this building, the one right here. Ah. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Very well marked. <laughs> With a little red right across. One last thing. Go Did ahead. anyone in your community speak regularly? to Pax. I cannot think of any one person above all others. Although, well, everyone needs Pax's services uh, from time to time, but I suppose the one who most often talked to her without actually needing any healing would be myself. We occasionally checked up on one another uh, if she needed any any items and ingredients I would be the one to take to make a note of that and make sure that she receives what she needs then we may be back with more questions I will be here all day Hmm. Okay. Where would you like to go? Uh, you can return to the camp, you can go to the infirmary. You could... Um... Mm -hmm. I'd probably vote for going to the infirmary next. It is the place we haven't been. I just, yeah, I just don't know how much information there's to be gained, but yeah. Probably not if... Sure. Unless there actually was more to the story, but... Yeah. Um, well, and um, maybe recent events have made it a, a little prudent that maybe some some amount of medical supplies that aren't magic-dependent might be useful. Wait, are you saying we're in a wrong <laughs> No, I'm just saying that, you know, perhaps... Um... <laughs> Do you wanna, no, do you wanna I wasn't going the in that direction. I, mean, I like the way you think, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
The Essen's dead. No one's here to watch over this stuff. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're gonna rob Pax's uh, place then, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. On the way there, I'd like to just kind of throw something out there. Mm -hmm. Seems like maybe she is kept intentionally ignorant of some things. Like she wishes to remain ignorant of some things. It would not surprise me. People find it easier living, not knowing everything. <clears throat> yeah, also if she is making a lot of the decisions in this colony, that probably makes those decisions way easier. She just doesn't know everything, right? Also more hurtful. <laughs> you know. Specifically to the Atara. Well. There is no proof to be found, is there? We want to make sure we do our due diligence for her parts. I believe what he's saying is true. What Feast said was true. I know why... Maybe it's a bit hasty, but... It just doesn't make any sense that they would kill the Essen. No. No, it does not. No one would. Oh, anyways... When you reach the infirmary, you see two human guards standing before the entrance. As you approach, one of them points at Talix and whispers to the other. Then he hits the ground with the back of his spear, and he says, Lady Serabath has given you permission to investigate. Whenever you'd like, you may come right in. Yes, thank you. Oh, uh, may my companions accompany me? He nods. Just glances very bri briefly at, at the rest of you, and uh, just as for you to... Come in. All right. Let's just see what we can see. When you open a door, uh, there is this strange sense of deja vu that washes over you as you step inside. Despite the structure of the house being different, the furniture inside is arranged in a nearly similar manner to Anp's infirmary back in Cleon. The beds are spaced in the same way. The same ingredients line the shelves. Even a faint smell of the room feels somewhat familiar. There's a staircase in the back leading down and another going up. Then there is another door that based on the size of the building should lead outside in the back. As you walk in and you reach roughly the middle of the room, there is a different smell that reaches your nostrils. It's a, a pungent and a intense, peppery, almost a little flowery. And that one feels different. It is not a smell you, uh, you recognize from uh, the infirmary of the other Ezen you've met. What would you like to do? Is and that there... smell is more towards the back? I'm sorry? That that other smell is more towards the back? Um, if you'd like to follow the smell, we could make that a perception check. Sure. Hey, uh, can I use guidance on myself too? You can. Oh, man. Ooh. Uh, Sid, okay. what were you about to ask? Is there a desk or a bookcase of some sort? Uh, some sort. Yeah, there is a there is a table that functions as a desk, uh, with a chair behind it. It's very clean. And there is almost nothing on top of it. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, the smell feels like it's coming towards. Uh, uh, 
either of the staircases. They're basically like facing one another. So if you stand in front of the door that leads in the back, you'll have one staircase to your left leading down and one that leads up. And you kind of get to that point and it could be coming from either staircase or perhaps from the door. And you just like have to basically check all directions to make sure. Uh, perhaps to make this faster, we should split up the work. Do you want to each check a different part of the place? Sure. Sure. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Well... If it was a murder without a struggle... I mean... Or I suppose with the struggle. But, uh, yeah, any sign of, uh, anything taken out of place? Sure. Pontifex is going to cast the tech magic. Okay. I guess we're not in time crunch. He's going to ritual cast it. That's okay. That will, uh, does it mean that will take 10 minutes? Yeah. All right. Um... How did Talix want to split up the work? Uh, I don't know. I just thought maybe people would call out their favorite <laughs> house, okay. house locations. Uh, since Pontifex is casting the uh, detect magic, he'll, st he'll probably stay in the main area on the ground floor. Hmm. And you could have a person upstairs and a person downstairs and a person outside. Any, any basement lovers here? <laughs> sure, I'll go down the basement. I can also cast detect magic once I go downstairs. All right. Okay. Tell us to go upstairs, I guess. I will head outside. <laughs> and Pontifex oh. on the ground floor. Um, sure. Okay. Who would we like to resolve first? I mean, Pontifex cast the deck magic. Mm -hmm. uh, so he will, he will, I figure he's, his casting takes a little while, so he might be uh, the... Yeah. Other yeah, people probably find stuff before he even finishes. Mm -hmm. This spell will take 10 minutes to cast, and I think Brooks instead is oh. instantaneous, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. What? Guys. What's up? How long does this last? I can, I can ritual cast. Detect poison and disease. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> that, that exists. Nice. I forgot I prepared that like a month ago. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Smart. So after looking around a bit upstairs, I think Talix might just pass. Uh, you know, walk all around and try to see if he can pick anything up with that. Okay. So Talix. If he doesn't then... see anything super obvious first. Uh, I assume he won't. Is he, is, he, uh, <clears throat> is he casting this before he goes upstairs? I'll go ahead and go upstairs minutes. and then start. Okay. Like, he'll look, um, just get a visual quickly on everything before okay. getting into that. Let's let's go with you um, to begin with. Uh, you take the stairs. Uh, and the area upstairs appears to be uh, Pax's private home. Uh, it's kind of a single open room that acts as both a kitchen and a bedroom, and it's only divided by a curtain. Uh, the smell you were chasing earlier is faint up here. It's almost entirely gone, perhaps because there is an open window uh, near the bed. Hmm. Anything you'd like to check in here? I mean... Okay, uh, does it look like Viezen was... I is the bed made? Does it look like Viezen was... The bed sleeping? is made. Hmm. Okay. Um... There is yeah, some I guess food on the counter. It's like, like uh, bread that's becoming to become... That's starting to become a little hard, a little dry. Huh. Okay. 
There's so it was like laid out ready to be eaten. Like Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's like that's actually interesting. Um Yeah, okay, so basically does it look like life was interrupted here suddenly? Roll an investigation check. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Hmm. Twelve. Vroom. Uh... Walking around, the feeling you get in front of this room is that, uh, um... There wasn't um, something violent that interrupted uh, just the fact that the bread was taken out and there is a knife next to it and it seems like something was about to happen with this food, uh, but it doesn't seem like anything was like tossed aside or uh, pushed away in some kind of manner. Um, it feels more like... Well, what you can, what you'd imagine is that perhaps uh, the doctor was upstairs and somebody came in and required their attention. Um, at the very least, nothing seems to suggest any kind of struggle upstairs. All right. Well, after that, tell us we're just going to begin the ritual cast. Okay. Um, next, uh, let's see. We have we have Tekka outside. Uh huh. How's uh, it looking like? <laughs> uh, what are you particularly looking Any for? Any birds? The, the back, uh, uh, <laughs> the back of the infirmary actually has a bit of a of an area um, with flowers planted in there that seem to. Um, they are like within what is obviously still the boundaries uh, of the building, so you'd imagine that uh, Pax was taking care of them. Uh, there is uh, a couple of empty, ba empty barrels and uh, not not much else really in the back. Uh, did you describe a smell? Is the smell different here? or? Uh, sure. The, the smell was actually like intense enough that when you opened the door and stepped outside, you could tell that uh, uh, it's not coming from outside. It's definitely somewhere inside the house. Got it. Oh. The flower patch, uh, when if you, it is a sort of a pleasant smell, but a different one. Um, is it possible to see any footprints? It's just been a few days. I guess the dust wouldn't have settled enough for that to be possible. Uh, you can roll a survival check. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> is that your first natural one? Think it is. <laughs> oh. oh, your that streak! Oh, come on, give give him inspiration, quick! Yes, inspiration. I, I have it. I have it. <laughs> you can't have a natural one. <laughs> Not for the whole campaign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not rolling it. No. Yeah, sure thing. Not um. The as as you have mentioned, um, it just looks like you do see footprints. Uh, you see the outline of many footprints that have come in and out and that have sort yeah. of like hardened over many days, maybe weeks. Uh, you imagine that uh, uh, the guards have already been in and out of this place many times, and uh, if there was any kind of trail here that might have been of interest, it's it has been walked over. Got it. Yeah, if there's nothing else, uh, Tekka will probably just try to follow that distinct smell. Okay. 
which will just lead you uh, back inside. And after a short while, you would end up in a basement where uh, Brooke would have noticed uh, uh, the sad smell was quite strong when he went uh, uh, downstairs. Uh, so, moving on to you, Brooke. The basement appears to be a storage room for various ingredients, um, which most of them you can kind of, well, many of them you can smell long before you see them. Uh, there's cupboards and barrels that line the walls and a couple of tables in the middle that are covered in jars and tools. Uh, uh, a few books poke out of the shelves and a ladder on one side allows people shorter than Brooke uh, uh, to reach them. There's also a set of uh, uh, gardening tools uh, on the ground close to the staircase. Uh, uh, a water watering can and uh, the little shovel thing specifically for like small flowers. Does it have a name? Like a shovel? <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, does my detect magic get anything down here? There appears to be nothing magical uh, in the basement, as as far as your spell can reach. You make sure to like walk the whole perimeter of the basement, um, just to make sure you get every corner. And uh, um, your your spell picks up nothing. All right. Um, I guess for the last does. Anything look like... Hmm... Does something feel like it's not where it's supposed to be? Like, out of place? You can roll an investigation check. Eleven. The really intense smell is kind of getting in the way of just your clear thinking. Uh, almost feels like you're you're getting a headache the longer you're standing in here looking around. Um, nothing jumps to, uh, uh, nothing catches your attention. Nothing seems uh, out of place. All the barrels are uh, lined up where it seems like they should be. One of them is even still sealed. Um, there is. Uh, the crates are untouched, uh, all the ingredients seem to be in their place, and really the only thing that that's uh, uh, that's on the table that catches your eye in the slightest would be this small um, glass. It's... It's like an ashtray, uh, where there is uh, uh, ashes inside and some remains of something that has been burnt, and uh, um, that, that's... As soon as you like step closer to it, it's that's where the strong smell was coming from. Sort of like as if somebody had been burning uh, uh, incense. Uh, although there isn't really just like uh, blocks or sticks of uh, of what's left of the incense. There's more like um, partially burnt petals uh, in there. Hmm. All right, can I take it with me upstairs? The ashtray? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, Tekka has come down the stairs, but uh, at the time when you when you pick pick it pick it up. Uh... Oh, what are you holding, Brooke? Well, <clears throat> you know quite a bit about plants, right? Mm, so, so, yeah, the, the strange smell, like the strongest at least, comes out of this and it seems like some leaves or petals have been burned there, or I don't know, whatever the Ezen wanted to achieve. You want to take a look at it? Sure. Uh, Taka? 
you can roll either a nature or a medicine check. Alrighty. Is some of the contents in here um, partially from the smell and partially whatever hasn't been entirely reduced to ashes um, and some of it you're not entirely sure but you, there is a couple in particular the petals that you spot uh, you're pretty sure that those uh, come from a, a plant you have uh, um, you've actually grown before uh, and you know that that one this one flower uh here it is as pretty as it can be um it is known as the death hibiscus uh for it's actually it's actually a name that's a slight exaggeration but handling the petals of a death hibiscus uh, without gloves will make blisters come uh on your on your skin and you can't imagine uh, anything good coming from burning the petals of this flower. Uh, it wouldn't produce a good smell, and it would definitely not have any have any uh, medical use. Nothing positive. Brooke, this is very strange. I know some burn herbs for cleansing, but this flower has no property, no purpose for Anessa. Hmm. That's weird, right? It do you is. think? Do you think we can just take it with us? I mean, it will be. Seeing how the smells, it will be quite obvious. It is the most unusual in this place. Perhaps the answer will give us a way forward. All right, let's bring it. Let's bring it to the others. Okay. Uh, uh, additionally, Taika would have seen uh, uh, one such flower outside in the back. Right. Uh. Tekka notices the watering can and kind of shakes it to see if there's any water left. It is completely empty. Okay, he brings it up to the first floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brooke, your your headache has actually like settled in. It's it's a, it's an actual headache now. It's a, and it's bothering you. And Tekka, just those few minutes you spent in the basement uh, analyzing the. The ashes has also brought a slight, just um, uh, unpleasant feeling to your head. Uh, upstairs, the Pontifex, your spell is finished. Um, you're standing right in the middle of the room, and like Brooke, you walk from side to side just to make sure you cover everything, and uh, nothing in here is magical that you can sense. Well, looks like we're doing this the old-fashioned way. And he's going to go and sort through everything, just rifle <laughs> through everything he can find. Uh, you can also roll an investigation check. Can I guidance myself on this? Yes. I rolled a four, so I got a 17. <laughs> I know, a four I a on five. a d20, a then uh, a guidance, and then your racial ability, and then plus six from just intelligence and proficiency. Right. Wow. <laughs> it's like he was made to research things. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Ground floor, ground floor. Okay. Uh, you poke around in the shelves and uh, 
uh, behind the desk. And there comes a moment when you're sort of like leaning on one of the beds sort of to, um, to like catch your breath and then continue with your investigation. And as you're leaning onto it, uh, you feel it creaking a little bit and then boom, uh, it it collapses underneath you and you like barely catch yourself yourself and like you look at what you just did and it seems that one of the legs of the bed uh, just straight up snapped with just you putting a little bit of weight on it. Uh, so the you're pretty sure you're, you don't weigh as, enough to break a bed as supposed to have people on it in the first place and you like bend down to check and you, you get it seems like there was some damage to the leg of the bed uh, that was there before you mm -hmm. uh, finished the furniture off. Uh, is there any signs of like, like scratching on the floor or like anything under the bed or like any red stains? Was, that seems a little specific. You focus on the area around the bed now that you've uh, uh, found something that was off. Uh, and uh, um, checking carefully the floor for stains, you do find a part where the wood that makes up the floor um, seems to have soaked up something and has gotten like a slightly darker coloration. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna try to... Um... This seems just destructive, but probably necessary uh he's gonna try to like pull up the floorboard <laughs> okay do you have like a crowbar or some utensil could you use to help you with that i think i do have a crowbar uh, i don't have a crowbar but i have a i have a silver staff a metal quarter staff uh, and a small knife yeah, I feel like the knife would be more useful because you just need something thin and long to fit in between the floorboards and like lift it up, right? Um, I have a world point too. card. <laughs> <laughs> that would snap. That would definitely snap enough. So yeah, uh, the, uh, the small knife just to pry up enough and then probably mm -hmm. the quarter staff to like, once exactly, I can fit yeah, it in there to range. then snap the thing. Okay, uh, just do a, 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 that will be a strength check. Is this guidance simple? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please, yeah, God, give me the strength to destroy this person's hardwood flooring. <laughs> Upstairs and downstairs, everybody would have also heard that, like the sound of the bed collapsing. So this would roughly be the time when uh, um, Talix would be finishing up his spell in a moment, uh, while Brooke and the uh, and Tekka would be coming uh, uh, to the ground floor. And uh, a 10 is not enough uh, to lift up the floorboard. So as you're like trying to leverage the knife uh, and you're like pushing up against it, that would be the moment when uh, uh, Brooke and Tekka see you just uh, in the process of vandalizing uh, this property. Uh, and Talix- Don't ask questions, just help. <laughs> Talix, as for your spell, uh, this will be the moment when it uh, when it finishes, and let me read up for a moment on uh, uh, detect poison and disease. You can sense the presence yeah. or location of poisons, poisonous creatures, and diseases within thirty feet of you. Um, okay. But it's, it lasts for ten minutes. I can yeah. move around with it. I yeah. can scan the place. Uh, I'm gonna say that uh, you can feel just the. Uh, the slightest hint of something off being in the air, just ever, ever so slightly. And like, you're, you're going to, if you quickly check uh, upstairs, nothing, nothing jumps, uh, nothing jumps out at you. But as soon as you go downstairs, it feels a little stronger. And you can feel uh, through the open door outside, uh, something poisonous in the back. And some of the ingredients on the shelf, uh, uh, do uh, are detected by your spell, and then you can also feel something downstairs on the shelf. Which shelf? 
Uh, there's going to be, there is a shelf with like some jars and some ingredients on uh, on the ground floor. Hmm. Are these things that looked like they were like taken out and prepared? Um. Like they were being used, or are they just like put up and stopped somewhere along with a bunch of other stuff? Uh, roll investigation. Okay. Can I use guidance? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna... Huh. Oh, okay. 18. The ingredients in the jars uh, uh, appear to all be deliberately in there, and some of them have been, like, turned into, for example, paste, or, uh, rounded up into into dust um and it seems like these might be perhaps uh y you would know um you would definitely have the knowledge that some things some ingredients uh can have bad effects in one form but it can be either mixed with other things or um heated up uh, or uh, something could be done to them where they might end up having instead of positive effects and made into proper medicine so the shelf you're looking at seems to mostly have raw things um with most of them you would even recognize some of them uh, as being in ingredients in basic medicines and some of them might still be in a raw state uh where they're not ready to be to be consumed or to be applied and some of them are reacting to you to your spell because of that uh, uh, but they don't seem to be out of place, except that there is a space in between the jars where it seems like something is missing and your spell is perceiving something from beneath your feet. And uh, you kneel down to look at the floor and as you're like running your hand on the floorboards, um, something hurts you and you pull back your hand and there's like a, a tiny, tiny fragment of, of glass that has managed to get in uh, your skin. Is it poisonous? Um, I'll pull it out very fast. <laughs> you feel like it, the, from from your, your like your spell is detecting that it might have been in the past. But probably it, it, it's such a faint amount that it wouldn't hurt you now. Okay, I'm gonna. Meanwhile, well, I mean, okay. yeah. Go on. I was just gonna say that behind you, there are there are efforts currently uh, being taken to uh, to tear up the floor, and Brook and yeah. Heck are like in the process of approaching Pontifex. So was I not detecting anything from the smoldering poisonous flower? Uh, you can feel something from uh, uh, downstairs. They brought it up with them, didn't they? Oh, that's right, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. They just did. Uh, yeah. You feel something poisonous coming from it. Okay, I have a glass vial in my backpack that I'm going to take out and put that in and stop her. It's before they all pass out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a strange thing to be burning. That it is. It may give us answers. <sighs> there's uh, there's an ingredient missing from his from her shelf over there. It looks like the bottle is broken. She must have worked on something. Helping someone. Speaking of helping someone, could someone tear up this floor for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see if I have a claw hammer. Wait, what I just do you need like some extra leverage on this thing. <laughs> I think he got his staff oh, yeah, jammed in there, right? Robot. He just can't like, muscle it. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Here, I've got everything you need. Alex will pull out a crowbar and a hammer. <laughs> From his, uh, <laughs> his comically sized backpack that has everything. Mm -hmm. 
Well, okay. I mean, these are generally useful tools for all sorts of things. And with the help of a crowbar and at least the two of you working on it, uh, eventually the floorboards are just going to... Uh, uh, they're, they're going to give and they will pop up. And there's some... Uh, there's like only a few inches of... Uh, uh, of like... Uh, of space. And then... No, what am I saying? Uh, there's a basement. If you pull up the boards, uh, it would, you would just be... You would just see beneath. Oh. oh, there's not like a, like an insulating layer between the floor and the basement? Uh, I'm gonna say no. Oh. Nope. Once the board structure. is broken, he'll... <laughs> I think he'll even like mage hand it and like hand it over to uh to Talik. <laughs> there's uh, blood on it how about, yeah and like if you flip it over on the side it would be it's at definitely the bottom. blood uh yeah and on the sides too like something seeped uh, you know from from above the bed was uh damaged one of the legs was weakened whenever i leaned on it it collapsed so i inspected the floor beneath and i found blood if this is not the sign of a scuffle i don't know what is Oh. Or if perhaps, I don't know. We also know they brought in two wounded people. It could have just been one of them. Was the bed itself bloody? Um, the like, you know, blood itself all over the, the covers or whatever, or like not, running down the was, leg of it? It was made with like fresh, uh, fresh sheets that had no stain on them. Hmm. All right, does it look Either. like there was a lot of blood that ran down? Like, like a whole person's worth of blood? Or like... <laughs> um, I'm just going to say not a whole person's worth of blood. Um, there's stains, but it, they, they do seem to be mainly focused on uh, uh, one smallish area. Uh, not a lot of floorboards where you, uh, as you like thoroughly check, seem to have uh, the, the, the off coloration that you've noticed. Either you're correct and there was some sort of procedure done and then, you know, proper things done afterwards. But I would imagine if it was something like that, they would have cleaned up properly. Or there was sign of a scuffle and this, this uh, fresh linens and such is to cover it up. I would not have looked beneath here if the bed had not collapsed. And if it was already this uh, damaged, I imagine it would have been repaired by the... Uh, the... person. It is difficult to put a patient onto a bed, which is prone to collapsing. I feel like this was a hasty cover-up. Certainly suspicious. But that's what I found here. No magic. And I didn't find anything else of interest with that investigation, right? Just the bed. Uh, just the bed and floorboards. But the other thing that you would have found later, it was found by Tavix. Uh, the ah. fragment of glass uh, where a jar is missing. Is there such thing as blood work in this world? in finding out someone's DNA through blood or is mm -hmm. that not something that is available hmm there might be magical means but uh, as far as I can tell nothing that would be available to any of you alright okay um, and by the way like looking around where that glass shard was like there's no sign of the rest of whatever that bottle was right uh well looking further in the area you'd find more uh very very small pieces of glass uh not actually like it looks like the area was sweeped uh so the only glass you're finding is if you're like thoroughly just checking the floorboards whatever got caught in there that is just too small to have been swept away um but like you're just as for 
the fragments, they don't seem to be in this room. And... Uh... If I double check and look back out where I sense some poison coming from, it's just the same. It's what you described as sin, right? It's the same type of flower. Mm -hmm. it, there's just burning. one, uh, but if, since you're paying attention to that particular flower now, uh, you'd notice that uh, the terrain in the little flower area has definitely been um, disturbed. And it looks like there should have been more of this kind of flower. Like there's an entire area that is just empty with just one of this flower. Well, the, all the other flowers have uh, a lot of them all together. Hmm. I'm gonna um, sketch this flower. Yeah, sure thing. I truly... I missed a thing. Uh, again, as you're looking at the, at the flower area, there is many flowers missing. Uh, not just is... Uh, not just the one that your spell is detecting. Um, some of the other ones, other colors, other species uh, uh, seem to have been uprooted recently. There's even a couple that are just missing the, the petals, but otherwise are still in there. All right. There I'm are several suspicious things here. Did the guards even investigate? this infirmary. <laughs> Catching sounds. Catching sounds. Well, Brooke found the ashes of a flower, a death hibiscus. It should not be poisonous, but I find it hard to believe Lion Essen would have such a plant here unless for a specific purpose. Mm. And if someone has been taking flowers from this infirmary there is a third party involved here after finishing sketching i to join <clears throat> it's entirely possible that the missing flowers are just ones that she herself was harvesting well, we can double check that, actually. Uh, let's see if we can find some of these flower petals that are missing here amongst these jars. Do they even match up? You want to match the flowers outside with the ingredients inside? Yeah, to see, like, because I know some of them are still there, just missing petals or whatever. Do we see them amongst okay. the jars inside? Uh, no. It seems that the flowers outside uh, were not meant to be used as ingredients in anything. Even as you okay. go through every single one of the jars, uh, um, it doesn't appear that uh, you, you, there's going to be no no petals and no. Perhaps if they have been, you know, turned into a paste or just, uh, you know, if they were to be beyond the, the recognition, you, you might miss them, but as far as you can tell, the flowers outside and ingredients inside are different. Okay. That is unusual. And yes, this particular flower is, uh... Well, I think you've already explained it. It's not... It's not pleasant to touch. Certainly yeah. wouldn't want to burn it. Maybe it's also just a bad cover-up. And the person who tried to cover it up didn't know about that. Grab the oh. first thing they saw, put it in there, burn it.
if we come forward with this information that someone was involved, they will immediately suspect the Atara feeling. That's if... why I would like to speak with them first. I want to know more about the two who were here, why they were here, what they saw while they were here. I saw many tracks here. Could this have been engineered, made this way for us to find? If they wanted to get rid of the Atar of Hilly, they could at any time, couldn't they? Why would they go through all this trouble? I don't know. Maybe to start a conflict? So you think it's maybe neither... Neither the guard here nor the Atar of Hilly, but someone else stirring up trouble? I mean, it could be. It could be also one side actually wanting trouble, but aren't able to, like, officially start a fight. Are you talking about the gnomes here? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. I'm talking about possibly anyone here in Vera. I mean, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but when we were done with the gnomes and the dragon, it felt like it was resolved for the moment, but it also left some kind of aftertaste of potential consequences. Uh, if this is a uh, political incident, this might be much more complicated than I suspected it would be. We have too little to work with. Well, I'd like to start with with the stories of the people who were last here. Right. As far as we know. Pontifex, this damage to the bed. Should we ask the Atara Philly if the Essen suffered any harm, anything that they recognized? I believe it would be prudent. I think taking this stained piece of wood with us may... I don't know if there are any practice doctors there. Perhaps they can age it. I don't know, but uh, it seems like it could be useful. Would these guards let us leave with parts of the infirmary? Do they have to know? I suppose not. We're in here with like our full packs and everything, right? Mm hmm. I feel that they let us in with no questions asked. I feel like they would let us leave all the same. Okay, then we bring what we have found. And we ask the Atara Philly next. Okay. Are you planning on taking the wooden plank? Is that it? Is that right? Um, it sounded like it, but... Okay. Yeah, I know we're Talix... taking the wood plank. Are we taking anything else? And uh, Talix I have put the, in a uh, jar in a vial. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. incense of death. <laughs> <laughs> death hibiscus. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk to the guards for any reason? Or are you just heading out? Hmm. Uh, how about this? Uh, when you step outside, uh, the the one who talked to, to you, Talix, is going to say, have you, have you found out anything? Well, there, there are a couple of things in there that 
took us somewhat by surprise. Some things, odds and ends missing, but it's hard to know for sure if it's anything meaningful or suspicious yet. Uh, we'll have to get some more of the story of people who are here. Do you know? Uh, do you know which guard it was that discovered the body? Sorry, um, it wasn't a guard. <laughs> Um, do you know who, uh, who were the guards who escorted those two Itara here before? Uh, actually, let me roll for it, Emma. Uh, I'm... Gonna say on a net twenty that one of them was one of the two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I yeah. So uh, this guy actually uh, uh, nods and says, "I was one of them." Do you know why they came here? What were their injuries or ailments? One of the gnome guards had uh, come across a couple of atarophilia out in the forest. Uh, uh, somewhere east of here and escorted them to our colony and then we brought them to Pax I think they got into a fight uh, we're bloodied uh, nothing too serious though oh uh, cut like with weapons one of them had the uh, one of them had a broken nose uh, the other I think hurt his arm uh, it, I do believe they they got in some kind of fight, and yes, weapons were drawn amongst each other. Uh, I'm only telling you what I heard from the gnome, and if what he said is uh, correct, uh, yes, the the two of them were fighting one another. All right, understood. That makes sense of, uh, well, at least one thing. <laughs> there was an old blood stain. we weren't sure where to place. But, um, well, still, we're going to look to speak to the those two, Itara, next. Let's see if we can get any more of the story out of them. Very well. Uh, any discoveries you should... Please, report them to Sarabath. Uh, have those two been uh, interrogated by any of the guards already? One of them has been talked to, uh, the other has yet to be seen. Although, he hasn't been uh, uh, cooperative in the slightest. Uh, can you describe him to us real quick? Anything you know about him? When I brought them in, uh, one of them had, uh, well, they all have that skin, they can sort of see through it, uh, uh but I remember the hair of one of them, uh, it was, it was black, but had a bit of a, of a blue, um, shimmer to it, very very peculiar looking hair is something that a, a human would never have the other well the main thing I remember of him was his broken nose he had blood all over his face didn't get much of a of a look at him is that the one that's missing as far as I know when I say missing he's probably just in one of their tents not coming out to talk to us all right you've been a great help thank you of course uh take take up brings up the <clears throat> watering can and asks where is your closest water source the plants must be tended to <laughs> oh uh he will point you to the river <laughs> 
Hmm. I see. Although, well, everybody, everybody has uh, um, barrels of water in their houses, and I'd imagine the infirmary would also have one, if not more. Then we'll see to it at our next visit. Thank you. He nods. Uh, now that you brought it up, though, uh, do you know of any reason why uh, someone might be taking flowers out of that garden back there? Are you asking the guard or Tekka? Oh, the guard. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I would have no idea. I don't, um... I don't grow flowers. Uh, I figured they're just pretty. Somebody no took reports them. of a garden raider around here, then. <laughs> not, not to my knowledge. Alright. Thank you again. Of course. Good afternoon. Uh... <laughs> As we walk away, Tekka would say quick to the others. One thing you should know. The barrels by those flowers, they were all empty. May not be anything but worth to note. That is unusual. There were also other barrels in the basement that both Brook and Tekka saw. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. But if there's not anything else, I guess we head back to the camp. Is Tekka going to water the flowers? Uh, we will eventually, but. Uh, are, yeah. are you taking the watering can? The, the watering can? Yeah, water can's coming with. <laughs> Okay, so it wasn't um, Pontifex who stole from Pax. Who's that guy? <laughs> Carry what on. What did I work? steal? <laughs> you suggested it. I suggested nothing of the sort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jason, you were about to say something, I think. I was wondering, because I imagine once we get to the camp, there might be a lot to talk about. I was wondering how long. Uh, we sure. wanted to go today. Uh, I wasn't planning on going past another half an hour, but uh, um, well, I'm uh, okay with another half hour. Now? Yeah, all right. Um, well, yeah. If you think that'll work out fine, then yeah, you but probably, probably won't not be... much longer for me than half yeah, an hour. You may not be talking to everyone in the camp in half an hour, uh, or talk about everything. Well, where do you think is the best place to call it? I think it's fine know? if we begin talking to them. Okay. Sure. Shout out to Pumpkin, who had surgery this week. Oh, she yeah. has the cone of shame, and she's she has yet to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man! My lap now. Give me She's all the, the memories of when my dog had that. Keeps bumping into walls. Oh no! She's the only pumpkin we carved this year. <laughs> so I have one of those dogs that's like, like creepy smart. Uh, like he just understands things that like you wouldn't expect an animal to be able to figure this out. Uh, mm -hmm. And our place is like pretty filled with like narrow walkways you could say um and he figured out and this is when he was you know super young uh whenever he got fixed um he had the cone and that you can't walk straight through these things because the opening of the cone is too big and it would cap so he learned to turn around and to go backwards, backwards. through things because the cone would collapse <laughs> so he he while he had that cone on he just walked backwards through like the majority of our place <laughs> yeah, like I was like, he would full sprint backwards. <laughs> he was like 
I don't know, he would just pick a corner and lay in it until he figured out that he can go backwards through things to accommodate the cone, and then he was fine. He just traversed the world backwards. Wow. Yeah, it, it's one of those weird things. It's like, you don't think, a, I don't, I don't expect most people would figure that part out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, hey, I got stories for the cone. Mm. Poor little guy. Poor pumpkin. Poor pumpkin. Um, are you guys planning on going back to camp directly? Uh, I think so. All right. Yeah. I think we want to talk to them before we are like, murder happened. <laughs> I still don't think murder happened. Okay. You, you, it's roughly around noon at this point. Uh, uh, and when you return again, the, the guards are watching you and every Atara that you walk past is watching you and uh, um, the same man that approached you earlier uh, is going to pretty much come running almost from the other side uh, just to make sure that he, um, that he sees where you are and what you're doing. Oh, hello again. Fuse does, uh, is her name, correct? He narrows his eyes. Nods. We didn't get properly introduced. My name is Talix Moore. Uh, I'm a cleric from Plurna, but uh, I'm not with the same church exactly. Different, uh, different branch. He's listening to you, uh, but he like doesn't really like ask follow-up questions. Well, uh, we've been told that you were actually the one who discovered the body. What of it? Did you notice anything unusual at the Essen's place? When I found her? No. Yeah. I um, I opened the door and it was on the ground, about the middle of the room. On the first floor, the ground floor. Yeah. Oh, uh, was she in the middle of uh, of preparing something? I don't believe so. It was just your there. The, uh, the two Aitara who were there being treated, had they already left before then? One has. The other was still being treated. Oh no, when I, when I found the body, uh, both of them had already left the infirmary. One of them has left the camp. You know where to... they went? Uh, yeah, that... That would be Zal. Uh, private matters. He, there have been a few arguments, a few disagreements. He was going to join up with a different clan, and that's... He managed to get out before any of this happened, so the guards didn't stop him. Is the name that he seemed to be in a rush? Hmm. I haven't actually seen him uh, leave the second time around. First time we all got to see it. Uh, uh, he and uh, well, there was an argument, like I said, and he just so stormed off. And to my knowledge, he was brought back to the colony. Because he and uh, he and Tirk had gotten into a fight, and they both got hurt from it. Then after that, I figure he just went on his way. I haven't seen him uh, uh, since the first time he left the colony. Both of these men are from your clan, though. They are. So I suppose Sal so no longer is. How did they? If Sal was already leaving, how did they run into each other out in the woods? 
<laughs> Turk chased after him, of course. Well, are they friends or enemies? <sighs> um, just roll a persuasion check. Okay. Just can't do it today. Um, <laughs> right? Nobody. No, I don't. Yeah, that's it. You have any inspirations? Nope. Okay. Do you want mine? Since I've since you've given me mine yours before. Uh. I mean that would be very sweet, but you don't have to. Here you go, buddy. Aww. Oh. Oh. Okay. I used mine to bludgeon a bird. <laughs> <laughs> As one should. <laughs> e, that makes e. it a 17. 15 plus 2, Thank yeah. you, Dennis. You're welcome, you're welcome. Fee was These bouncy of... dice are working today. He <laughs> used to look back at the camp and lowers his voice just a little bit and says, Look, uh... Everyone here in the camp knows what happened, so it's not exactly a secret, but uh, still, perhaps do keep this to yourself. Don't don't go bother no one about it, all right? Oh, okay. The whole thing that happened is uh, young people in love, Zal, and uh, Noan were together for a while, then they had an argument, and uh, he said some particularly nasty things. Tyrk is Noan's brother, so when Zal left, uh, uh, and was angry enough to say that uh, he never wanted to see Noan again, and that he'd join some other clan so that uh, we would... Uh, never cross paths again. Uh, that's when her brother chased after him, and I believe they got into a fight uh, away from our camp. Okay. Well, that explains his reasoning for leaving then. I suppose. Hmm. Any reason either of them would have wanted to pick some flowers? <laughs> Perhaps Zalmanev might have liked to do that before the argument. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid once everything comes to light. Zal might be considered suspicious for the unfortunate timing of everything. There are some things... Well, here. Well, maybe you can tell me something about this. I'll tell us about that glass vial. Why would anyone be burning this plant? Do you know what that is? He's going to just lean forward a little bit and uh, uh, take a very close look at the contents and then he will shake his head and he will say, I haven't seen this one before. Well, it's not medicine. Plenty of flowers if you burn them, though. They make a good smell. We make... We make various uh, uh, scented things with them, from candles to incense, though I, I wouldn't be able to tell you what flowers can be burned safely. Well, this seemed to be mixed in with some, but this particular flower is poisonous. Then you shouldn't burn it. Was it. Being, 
Well, it was being burned in the Essen's uh, infirmary. I can't help but find that a bit suspicious. Uh, you see Fuse so just like passing a hand through his hair and then taking just like this very good look at you. Um, one of his eyes being like only halfway open. What are you implying? I... Uh, there are just some unanswered questions. I will need to speak to those two. I understand Sal might be a bit harder for us to find right now, but... We'll need to speak to Turk today. If you look at Zal, you're... You're free to talk to him. It's for Turk, he should... He should just be this way. And it'll just for you to follow him. And, um... He's going to... Uh, lead you... Uh, in front of one particular tent. And as you're approaching, you can see there is a... There's a... In front of it, there is... A woman sitting on a blanket. Uh, in front of it. Her hair is messy. Her eyes are swollen and... Full of tears. And the next to her is... A man with an arm currently around her shoulders. He's holding her close while she just quietly sobs. Uh, both of them have black hair with this subtle uh, blue luster to it. And you kind of... Hey, pumpkin. You kind of notice it because you sort of like knew to look for it. And uh, uh, pretty much any time they just turn their head so that the campfire... Uh, light or the sunlight reflects off of it. You can see uh, the hair almost looking more blue than uh, than black. Um, when you approach, the man gets up right away and stands between her and you, and he's just going to like quizzically look at Fused, and uh, uh, Fused will just say. These foreigners have a few questions for you. Um, uh, then, uh, you know, as Tirk, um, just sort of like... Does he it's... look injured? How's his arm? Um, all of you can roll a perception check. Uh, all right, Hmm. Nice. <laughs> okay. So, uh, his arm... He's wearing <laughs> a... He's wearing a glove, and then he has long sleeves. But, like, as he moves, you can see... Uh, you can uh, peek in through, uh, like, at the, at the very end of the sleeves, where you can see some uh, bandages that are wrapped uh, uh, around uh, his arm. And uh, for... Uh, for Brook and the Tekka, uh, Brook in particular would be like the first to 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 real uh, to notice uh, that the bandages are like pretty much identical to the ones that he bought from Anp uh, a week back. Uh, so it's the <coughs> same kind that an, uh, another Ezen uh, was using. Um, and his movements do look a little stiff, uh, uh, mainly with his wrist. Right. Um, Fuse is just going to let you speak. To Dirk. Good morning. Uh, so, as it happens, I believe you were one of the last two people to see Pax alive, and we just want to know a bit more about your visit the other day. 
You don't look like guards. We're not. We're... Uh, you could call us mediators. We're just trying to get to the truth and bring a peaceful end to this tense situation. just glances at Fused and, uh, um, oof, okay, uh, Fused is going to tell him, just censor them. It's going to be the same questions, just give the same answers. And, uh, if Fused seemed a little standoffish and annoyed with your presence, uh, Kirk is just even more, uh, and he adjusts his position a little bit again to make sure that he's right between his sister and the rest of you. And uh, he says, I've already talked with the guards. What else do you want to know? Do you know anything about uh, this flower that was burning here? Um, he just takes a very pa uh, passing glance at your vial and says, Nothing. You didn't smell anything unusual while you were in there. The place smells like a lot of things. So, you and, uh, and Sal, you left early before your treatment was done. We went there, got a few bandages some painkillers, and left. Well, what can you tell us about the state of, uh, the state of Pax whenever you saw her? She was still alive, if that's what you're asking. Hmm. Look. I know what you're trying to imply. None of us would hurt her. We have no reason to. All of us respect uh, as in, unlike you foreigners. Now what do you mean by that? First thing you guys tried to do as soon as she was dead was to cut her up. So I understand that's very important to the people of the Daria that foreigners don't see the body of an Ezen. Nobody can see the body of an Ezen. Not foreigners, not Lidarians. Can you tell me a bit more about why that is? If you ever were to see beneath the robes, beneath the mask, you will get cursed. Oh, fair enough. Um, so, I haven't brought this up before, but what happened with what happened with you and the guards? happened with me and the guards? Nothing. Well, they just escorted us to Pax. And, uh... What about with Fust here? What, was there some sort of fight? Fust? I totally, like, chuckles a little bit. Mainly, uh, you see Tarek immediately, like, glancing his way. And, yeah, Fust just chuckles a little bit and says yeah why don't you tell them and uh, Kirk sort of like uh, there's a bit of a shrug and says right uh, I punched him and 
Fuse is looking at him like expecting him to say more and then eventually Tyrk says, I've already apologized. And then with him not elaborating, Fuse is going to turn towards Zoot Alex and he'll say, that was, that was the reason why I went to see Pax. Uh, Tyrk here has a bit of a short temper, gets mad over nothing. We all know that. Not the first time he has thrown a punch, although the first time he has dared to do that to me. Hmm. That's not why the other one ran away. Scared of you. Um. Tyrkin just grins for a moment and uh, says. He better be. Get my hands on him, I'm going to fucking kill him. I realize this might be a bit personal, but maybe you could explain a bit more about what happened with him. <sighs> he just said things you should never say to a woman. Definitely never to my sister. I will not repeat his words if that's what you want me to do. Did he ask you to smile? Was he already or... planning on it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, he didn't say that. <laughs> I'm never gonna forget that Twitch chat comment. That was really good. How would you was say he already Jason? planning on? Was he already planning on leaving the clan? You know, before all this happened? Or was this a recent turn of events? Zal was... Zal is the kind of person to threaten all sorts of... All sorts of things. Uh, it's come up before. I guess we all saw it coming. He was really just aiming for my sister. And once they broke up, he left. I chased after him. I wasn't just going to let him leave after what he said. Uh, and you know the rest. Hmm. None of this has anything to do with Pax. We got there, got patched up, left, and then Fuse found her later. Are you satisfied? Do you know do you know of any reason why Saul might have been Taking flowers from Pax's garden? Or taking any ingredients off of her shelf? No. Why would anyone? Is there any chance that you two fought while you were Still in Pax's infirmary. That you two what? Were you did you two get in a fight while you were in the infirmary? No. Nothing happened in the infir in, in the infirmary. Uh, Can I insight well, check that? Yeah. Just try to get a vibe on it. Mm-hmm. I would like to vibe check. Vibe <laughs> checks out. Uh, the man has been somewhat ev evasive and somewhat aggressive towards you this entire time, and you don't feel like this particular question was, uh, uh, this particular answer was any different in terms of just, uh, um, how do you say it to jump into in English? Uh, uh, in terms of attitude. Any of you? Talix, may I ask other questions? You, you got any ideas? Hmm. You know Essen well, while we do not. Was 
Pax is passing expected. We have a saying between Ladarians. When something cannot be known, it is like the death of an essence. Not even the gods can predict it. Has there ever been a time you have suspected an essence life taken instead of leaving? He's looking at Tekka as he speaks, and then he listens to Dalek translate, and then he looks straight at the Tekka when he answers, and he says, Never. Why would anyone harm an Ezen? They just... here to help. And it is important to respect them for what they do. It is. I agree. And you have seen no harm on Paxis 4. If you're worried that myself or that Zal did anything to her... No. We did not. I'll make this clear. I do not suspect you, but when the answers are given, the sooner you may leave unhindered. She was fine last I saw her. I'm not aware of any injuries she might have had. She was alive and well, and when we left, she was still alive and well. Look. Zal was a piece of shit, but not even he would hurt an Essen. All we want to do is take that coffin to the north and just put it in the ground and be done with this whole thing. There's one more thing that I'd like to request the two of you to agree with um, that could perhaps bring it into all this, at least as far as your tension with the uh, local guard here. You might not be totally comfortable with it, but you could just be flexible on this. That priest, she wants to speak with the two of you under a spell of hers to ensure that you're telling the truth. <laughs> I will not submit myself to any of you foreigners' magic. Few said it. They can't let us. They, they can't make us do this, right? Confused just replies, well, they, they can't. I don't believe it is a question of making you do anything, but uh, it is an option. They could expedite the process. If, if you really are telling the whole truth here, all this would do is make them see that, well, that that's exactly what you're doing. It would just make them believe what you say. Tyrk says, we only have your word of it. Your magic could be doing anything to us. It could force us to lie. It could make us make a confession that we don't mean. Well, is there anything you would want in return? So it's even? Even? And you're not the only one taking the risk? If we were let go right now, it would still not be even. All right. Well, 
Look. For my part, um, it's not much, but are you still wounded? I could show you. My magic is not harmful, if you'd allow me. Uh, roll a persuasion check. Again! My best skill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He sort of, like, protectively pulls the, the injured arm towards his chest with the other, and he just, like, shakes his head. Are his bandages bloodied? Uh, from what you can see, his bandage bandages are not bloodied. Hmm. Oh! What? Um. Squeak! Bird! <laughs> Don't mind me, short intermission. So <laughs> 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 they were fighting about the hay rack. <laughs> Aww. What? If I was put under the same spell, would that ease your mind? Um, you also roll a persuasion check. All right. And this this filtered through Talix. Uh, um, yeah. And the. Uh, go ahead and roll that. And yeah, the like, when you suggest that, he immediately just sort of like. Uh, squints a little bit in sort of like disbelief. What? Gee. Oh. And oh things God, balance out for you. Are... <laughs> things Jeez. have immediately balanced out for you. <laughs> one nat one, eight nat twenties. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Listen, things are not going to go well for Tekken in the future. It's just, yeah, it's going to <laughs> ratio you out. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> There is a reason that Sid was our talker in the last campaign. <laughs> hmm, okay. So, uh... Da, 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 da. Dirk shakes his head again and says, You could just be working with them, for them. Uh, we won't even know if the same magic affected you the same way it affects us. You're not with us anyway. Uh, but you see that the way like fused turns to look at Tekka? Seems like like a bit of a better reaction compared to Tirk. And says Well if the same magic were to affect all of us, including them, can't do anything harmful to us, can they? And uh, Tyrk just looks fused for a moment and then shakes his head again and says, I will not do it. I cannot trust them to put me under any kind of spell. I thought Ladarians were rather keen on magic. Our magic it is seems different to be from yours. Here. The way you do it is unnatural. Well, which way? We actually yeah. have someone with us who might cast magic a bit more familiar to you. Hmm. Yeah. Technically, I am l using Ladarian magic. Oh, well, I was actually thinking of Pip, but yes, you too. <laughs> 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 we do have a Ladorian rat. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have the capabilities to put you under that spell. So I wouldn't be able to do that myself. Pip, since you're here and can speak with us, <laughs> aren't you able to see into people's hearts or minds somehow? Well, this would be a great time to call the session off then, and then next time we're gonna hear Pip's reply. 
amazing. Because he sure that can. Works. We've seen this before. Uh, so we will just continue the conversation next time on, ne on the, ne the next session, which will not be next Sunday, because it is actually um, Jason and I's wedding anniversary. Uh, <gasps> so oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Going to, to celebrate that. Uh, hmm, the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as, usual, as usual, we'll just schedule for the next day uh, whenever we're able to. Oh my goodness, I have a cone that's being slammed into me. <laughs> and huh? yeah, I hope you had fun today. Yeah. And I hope you have a lot of theories as to what is going on. And uh, think about it. And then you're going to Sherlock Holmes your way out of this one next time. All right. All right. Very well. I'm going to call off the stream here. <coughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah.